what's up guys <clears throat> hold on one second <clears throat> so my friend says he hates toasters what does that mean what do you like air fryers Air fryers are the bomb. All right, guys. Yeah, sorry. Took me a second there to get started. But we are back. Boy, so I noticed this is the time for uh, lives. I mean, when I go on TikTok, it's just live after live after live. And uh, let's see if we can't attract new followers, new watchers. Passover cleanup. Oh, that. That's what you mean. Uh huh. Yeah, kashering a toaster or cleaning for Passover. Um, I think I just saw this person. Hey. Hi. I wanted to ask a question. Thank you for having me on. I'm just curious. Um, not not yeah. that I'm going to do this. I'm devout Christian. Um, uh -huh. but I'm just curious. What is the process if someone decided that they wanted to convert to Judaism? How does that process work for Judaism? So, um, I was just watching you speak in another life. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, about um, something about uh, schools or kids or psychology. I don't remember what it was. Something, uh, what were you talking about? Yeah, I think it was that live that that person does that used to be a religious Jew and is no longer a religious Jew. Or, uh, oh, no, no. It, it was um, an ex-Christian, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yes, yes. That's how it's going to be. I tried to get on, and he didn't bring me up. Whatever. Cool. <laughs> uh, hold on one second. All right, so what's the process of conversion? So yeah. conversion typ typically takes about a year, a mm -hmm. year plus. Um, you can't convert anywhere in the world, but in America you could. Mm -hmm. um, so I usually tell people to go to their local synagogue, preferably Orthodox synagogue, and uh, just Tell the rabbi that you're interested or you could visit without um, wanting to convert just to see if you like it. Um, but, yeah, it takes about a year. You have to end up moving into that religious community. If it's an Orthodox synagogue, conservative synagogues allow you to drive. Also, reform. I don't really endorse reform conversions. I think, OK, if you don't have an a Orthodox synagogue near you, conservative is an option just because. I figure if anyone really wants to convert to Judaism, they're typically coming from some Bible-based religion. Mm -hmm. uh, so a movement like Reform is very, very religious light. And uh, they're, not, they're not fundamentalists, meaning in the sense that they don't believe that God wrote the Bible or like that mm -hmm. the Bible is divinely inspired. Um, yeah, so you have to move into a Jewish community. Your whole family will have to convert with you. Uh, well, at least your husband will have to convert with you if you're married. Your kids okay. don't have to convert, although they okay. can. Uh, you could convert babies, too. And did I, is there anything you think I missed? Um, no, I don't think so. So, so from a Christian perspective, conversion usually involves baptism. What mm. about in the Jewish faith? I know there's no baptism because that's that's based on Christ, but is there some type of ritual? Of Why Christ don't Jews the accept the Almighty Jesus Christ? Uh, yes, I'm, rem I'm familiar with Jews for Jesus and, and some of the the religions, the, mm -hmm. the sects that do, but I'm just curious. Okay. Is so yes, we have baptism. We don't call it baptism. In Hebrew, it's called tevila. Uh, it's done in a mikvah. It's just an immersion pool. So yes, before you convert, you have to immerse yourself um, either in some man-made pool or the beach or some sort of river. So mm -hmm. yes, we do that. That's required. Mm -hmm. And do you have, I guess, you say for one year, so that year is spent in studying the, the Jewish faith with yeah. uh, in, in a class or with Not a really. Arm? It's mm -hmm. more who you know, not what you know. So mm -hmm. they want to see you around for that year. It's not so much about studying, but they may mm -hmm. sort of test you on basic things like a few blessings, if you know how to... Uh, kosher your kitchen and and stuff like that but it's more about being in the community and them getting used to you and know knowing that you're serious about living a jewish life that's 
that's typically what the year's for. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but you I could was... convert. You could convert. Um, you said you believe in Jesus. Have, yeah. Have you ever considered becoming a Torah observant Christian? A Torah observing Christian. Yeah. I came from a tradition. I'm Catholic now, but I came from a tradition that was I was Seventh Day Adventist as a child. Okay. Uh, is that along the lines of what you're talking about? Because they sort of. the Sabbath. Well, that's and, one law like, where you a vegetarian also. My family was. I was not, though. Mm-hmm. I kind of rebelled as a teen, but. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, that's a good reason to rebel. I mean, you know, <laughs> like, yeah, not all Seventh Day Adventists are, are vegetarians, correct? No, no. But many are, though. Many are. Okay. Yeah. So it's something like that. Apart from you have to keep many more laws. We have a total of. 613 plus mm-hmm. uh but yeah that it would include dietary laws keeping the holidays um and then there's rabbinic laws that include even proper dress proper speech so yeah it's it's a more structured belief system it's not just faith although faith is part of it right i mean believing in faith is um, believing in god itself is a command uh yeah but we feel that uh if God said to do it, that's what we should do if we claim to follow God. But if you're a Christian, I think if um, you're trying to live like Jesus lived, well, Jesus would have kept the law, right? And I understand. I mean, as a Christian, you don't have to feel that you're saved by the law. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it seems that uh, well, I, I you are judged by Jewish was Christian Jesus and Mary were Jewish. They, they're, they're, they were Jewish. Mm-hmm. Um, we don't deny that. Um, I guess technically is if I were born in biblical times, I would technically be considered a Gentile, correct? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So I would technically. So according to Jesus, I'm not necessarily bound by the the Jewish laws because I was never Jewish. According to most Christians, there there are many Christians who disagree. Mm -hmm. For example, Messianic Jews feel that um, although you're not saved by by works, uh, you're sure judged by them. Mm-hmm. In terms of, because there's different degrees of I don't know of being or or having your faith validated by God, uh, but yes, I think Messianic Jews believe I don't know if I'm butchering their theology, but that you're saved by by grace, but uh, you should still keep God's commands. I mean, one because God uh, doesn't really change His mind. Two, Jesus Himself said, you know, that anyone who teaches the least of these to break the least of these commandments will be called least whatever. Um. So, yeah, I mean, I think it's beneficial. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. But it's possible okay. in case you want to convert it to things. <laughs> well, thank you so much for, you know, hearing me out, answering my questions. I appreciate it. Sure. No problem. Bye. Right. Bye. Welcome, David Macedon. Um, why don't you why why do Jews rest on Sundays? Or uh, uh, I know when I was learning about Judaism, uh, it said that Jews don't work on Sundays. No, you didn't hear that. Jews do work on Sundays. You mean Saturday? There, yeah, yeah. There was one day in the week that where, where Jews rested and basically did nothing. Right. So that's from from Friday night to Saturday night. Um, that is an attempt to keep God's Sabbath. Uh, and what what is that exactly? The Sabbath. Um, yeah. the week is God created the world in six days, and rested on the seventh day. That one way we are making some sort of public declaration that we acknowledge that God did this is by emulating Him. Not to mention that He told us to do it for that reason, because He rested just like He created for six days and rested on the seventh. We create for six days and rest on the seventh. So it seems like. Working for six days is as much as a law as it is to rest on the seventh day. So it keeps us productive, but it also keeps us sharp and uh, ready to attack the week with one day of rest. Yeah. Uh, so well, why don't most Jews believe in Jesus? Because, you know, some do, but some don't. So I think the biggest issue is the idea that Jesus is God. That probably has to be the biggest I don't know. Uh, it causes the biggest theological fork in the road. That's something that um, Jews do not tolerate. The idea of um, one, mainly 
a limitation of God from that perspective. We think it's just, um, you know, unbecoming of, of a, a God that's not limited. Uh, I'm just telling you what's typically understood by, by rabbis like Maimonides and stuff like that to assume that God has, has partners or God in some way became a man for however long uh, is in some way antithetical to the Jewish message. That's what's typically taught. Uh, so, um, wait, <laughs> I had another question. Let me get my notes real quick. All right. Okay. Someone wrote, I tried to become Jewish, but I'm blind and don't have access to the full blown rights near me. I don't know what that means. I don't know what full blown rights. If you're blind and you can't keep certain laws, you're not, you're not, uh, you're not liable. What does the Talmud say about, about, uh, Christ? So, uh, so. Yeah. What is a Talmud, by the way? Because I know you have a Torah and a Talmud. Is mm -hmm. is it like uh, another book in the Torah? No, it's a book that contains legal rulings that that don't appear in the Torah. It, it, it it's not in any way comparable to the Torah. The Torah came, we believe, um, it came from God. At least the commandments within the Torah, and the Talmud contains the legal rulings of the Sanhedrin. So the Sanhedrin is a court. It went by by many names, but that the Torah itself, it's a court that the Torah itself told us to establish. And the Torah also told us not to stray from the right or to the left of what this court instructs us. So the rulings of this court appear in the Talmud. The Talmud is actually made up of two books, one called the Mishnah and one known as the Gemara. So the Gemara is the commentary to the Mishnah. But the Mishnah is the book that contains the legal rulings of this great court. So this great court um, was responsible for setting civil law in Israel to fill in the gray area because the Bible wasn't so clear on how to keep certain laws. Like it tells you to keep the Sabbath. It doesn't tell you exactly how to keep the Sabbath. Although it says that uh, there's a capital punishment attached to uh, violating the Sabbath. So there had to be some consensus on how, they was, how this was done, how the Sabbath was kept. So uh, the Talmud is essentially there to keep us on the same page and keep us progressing in a uniform manner. Yeah, civilly and religiously. Uh, so, oh, okay, so why is the Torah always like a scroll? It's like a script and it's never like a printed book like the Bible or the Quran or any other holy book. Yeah, so it's both actually. However... Colloquially, in modern day talk, most people don't call printed Torahs, Torahs. They'll call it a Chumash, which it, it sort of means the same thing. I mean, it emphasizes more uh, the fact that it's made up of five books. I mean, I mean, Chumash, I mean, comes from Chamesh, from uh, five. Uh, also, I think in Greek, the Pentateuch, it's, it's really the Greek way of saying Chumash. But yes, it's the same book. But when it's in scroll form, uh, in in its sanctified state, because we we um, have certain rules on how we're supposed to write Torah scrolls. Right? Um, they can't contain any errors. They're handwritten. They're written on animal parchment. So only this, at least amongst Jews, we call the Torah. But yes, the book exists in printed form. As a matter of fact, every Christian has a has the Torah in their Bible. The first five books of of a Christian Bible is is the Torah. Uh, yeah, no, the you know the Old Testament. So, well, um, I I think that's all. So, uh, thank you for answering my questions. Uh, all right. uh, I'll cool. I'll leave now. So, oh. all right, take it easy. All right. Uh, good day. Okay, be well. All right. Let's see. All right, we're getting new people. It's interesting. Other people who, I guess, they're they're people who attend lives in the afternoon, people in the evening, people in the mid. You know. The Muslims come out at night. You know, the freaks come out at night. Whatever. If you ever host a live after midnight, it's going to get packed with Muslims for some crazy reason. What's up, Joe Span or Joe Pan? Hey, what's going on, Rabbi? Hi. Um, yeah, it's really cool because I never really get to talk with uh, Jews and have conversations about theology. So this is really cool. It's mostly like Muslims and atheists and whatnot. So, yeah, this is really cool. Yeah, well, there's a uh, lot of, uh, in the world just... 
many of us don't don't preach what we practice. So uh, I'll try uh, to answer your questions. Go ahead. Yeah. So, uh, well, I want to get to know you a little bit more. Uh, so, how long have you been Jewish? I converted to Judaism twenty four years ago. Okay, I, and I also hear that uh, it's it's difficult to convert to Judaism. Is that true? Unfortunately, yes. Um, not so difficult in this country. Um, it takes about a year, a year plus. In Israel, it also takes about a year, but you have to have a place to live for at least a year. And you're not allowed to work during that time. Uh, so it's not extremely difficult. It really depends the rabbi you're dealing with. But I would say it takes about a year. You have to move into a Jewish community. Most Jewish communities um, are not uh, very cheap to live in. And there's a lot you have to learn. Yeah. Damn. So you have to like study before you convert? Uh, yes. Well, I mean, if you're into religion, you'll love it. Right. I mean, people yeah. Christianity because Christianity is a bit culture less. Right. I mean, it's more based on faith. Yeah, but being that now you're learning the same Bible you used to read, but now you're reading it in Hebrew and you're learning the blessings. And I mean, yeah, yeah, it's it's a joy ride for anyone who comes from Christianity. I'll tell you that. Oh, very cool. Uh, by the way. um Okay, well, no, never mind. I guess you already answered. Um, so wh why why Judaism? Why not like any other religion? You mean that out of the two other major monotheistic religions or out of like Hinduism? <laughs> yeah, like, well, yeah, like any religion. All right. So the advice I give people is that right when they choose to enter any religious system, it benefits them to start with the religion that they grew up with. Okay. Um, now, I wasn't always religious. I, uh, when I became religious, I first became Christian. And um, I spent some time in seminary. I actually got ordained as, as, as a pastor at Jacksonville Baptist Theological Seminary many, 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 many years ago. And then uh, through study, I came to the realization that Jesus wasn't God or the Messiah. And so I felt that, where am I going to go? And so um, I, I kind of fell back on Judaism just because I still um, appreciated what Christians call the Old Testament, the God of Israel, this and that. Um, in terms of other belief systems, I never really delved into the Book of the Dead or what Hindus or Sikhs happen to believe. Um, I mean, we only really have, if we're lucky, right, at least from a, from a Talmudic perspective, 120 years on this planet. So I think it benefits people to really look around and follow trends. See what system has in some way elevated this planet more than any other system, right? I mean, is it the Epic of Gilgamesh, the Code of Hammurabi? No, it's essentially the Bible. And it's not the whole Bible, but particularly the ethical portions of the Bible, the individual moral training, right? I'm not saying that other belief systems are necessarily bad or immoral. No, there's a lot of good in, in many other belief systems. But in life, the choice is typically not between something that's horrific or something that's perfect, but something that's good and something that's better. This is why the name of this show is Judaism is better, right? Not that Christianity is bad or Islam is bad, right? But I just think that uh, being that it's closer to the source and being that Islam and Christianity are both offshoots of Judaism and being that Christianity and Islam really just brought narrative and metaphysics to the table while Judaism brought that as well as the ethical code that I believe was appropriated by both Islam and Christianity. For all those reasons, I think that's what makes Judaism better. Yeah. Okay. Um, but when it comes to, like, whether it's true or not? Oh, well, true. I never use that word on this show. I mean, at least I personally, because it's such a subjective term. Uh, things that I believe are true, I wouldn't thrust on you. I think that's a sign of a fanatic. A fanatic is someone who tries to judge people outside of his religion by... by the ceremonial or theological precepts of his religion when the other person has. I'm sorry. Hold on. I was getting a call. Just mute this. Can you hear me? I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah I hear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah sorry. And when a call comes in, it, like, it freezes. So they don't freeze it too bad. Uh, yeah, so in terms of it being true, it. People would only remain in a religion if they felt that religion was true. Okay, so I think that washes out the notion of truth. It's, it's, um, I think from my perspective, it's what I think, what, well, not what I think, what the consensus is that makes the world a better place, right? And I think 
it's the ethics in particular that that does that. Oh, okay. So you're Jewish, not necessarily because you think Judaism is true, but be, simply because it makes the world a better place. No, no. I have my personal reservations on on why I'm Jewish, and I believe in God, and I believe it's true. However, if I'm dialoguing with someone who's not Jewish, I can't speak to them. You know, Muslims do this all the time. You know, they'll they'll try to judge me by their theological standards when I haven't bought into those standards yet. So I can't talk to someone who's not Jewish, you know, with what the rabbis have to say um, or my own devotional interpretations I mean, to the Torah. I have to speak to you in a language that we could both agree on, and that's ethics. Right. What makes the world a better place? What 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 leaves this world a little better than we found it for our kids? Mm. Um, yeah. I mean, if I tell you it's true and and you're going to go to hell because my God says you're going to go to hell. I mean, it's it, I'm really going to lose you. Right. I mean, not that. I well, no. Like, go to hell, right? Yeah, I definitely agree that, like, most people react negatively towards that. But like, I, I, I guess I'm a little bit more rare. I believe that telling somebody that they're in danger of hell is a love like as long as you're doing so in a respectful and loving way is actually a loving thing to do because sure you know you're you're worried about them you want them to know the truth and to be saved right there's nothing wrong with that there's nothing wrong with telling somebody sure. that oh, no. they're wrong. There's wrong i also think it's admirable i mean if you believe it i mean i just don't believe it right uh if i did believe it then <laughs> heck i'm here offering people judaism because i think It'll help them, just like you may be offering people Jesus for the same reason. I mean, I think it'll help them live better lives, and you think it'll keep them out of uh, eternal torment. I mean, they're both noble pursuits. Yeah, but I think it's, it's much more important to, like, simply live a better life. I think it's about, like, um, you know, being saved. I think that's what's most important. Yeah. Because, like, so, there's no point in, like, living a good moral life if you go to hell. You know what I mean? So that's the difference between Judaism and Christianity. I mean, I understand that Christians believe this, but the notion of hell doesn't really appear so literal in the Jewish Bible. Now, Jews believe in hell. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. The average Orthodox Jew believes in hell. However, it, it, well, they believe in it as, as a result of the cruelty on this planet and just wanting to see justice meted out. Even in like from a divine level, but not because their Bible commands them to. So mm -hmm. it seems that if God wanted us to be so satisfied <laughs> with heaven and hell, he would have mentioned something about it in our text. You know, so it seems like God wants us to focus more on this planet than, uh, you know, the afterlife. I'm just because it's too easy to coerce people into being religious, into their religion, like just by how bad they can make hell sound or how, how pleasurable they can make heaven sound, right? And they do it. Uh, Heck, who can top 72 virgins? I guess the guy with 73 virgins, right? You know, five minute abs, two minute abs. You know, it's it it seems a little primitive, I mean, from my perspective. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's, okay. Um, for for us Christians, it's I guess it's different because uh, uh, Jesus teaches that like wherever your treasure is, that's where your heart will be. So if your focus is on this life, you know, that this isn't like you're gonna die in this world right but if your focus is on heaven then you'll live in heaven no i understand i yeah. I, I mean just our bible doesn't say that our bible tells us the mm. opposite i mean i know why you believe it you know but this is why christianity if taken alone is essentially a different religion if you're a christian who mm. tries to harmonize what appears in the jewish bible and the christian bible then i think those are redeemable qualities from a Jewish perspective. But a Christian, like a Catholic, I, I'm, I mean, from my perspective, Catholicism is a separate religion, right? Um, however, Messianic Judaism, that's... To harmonize both texts, and I think that, I mean, it aligns more with, with, with what I'm teaching here. But don't, don't you think it's more noble to focus on eternity rather than this finite life of the, these short 80, if you're lucky, these short 80 years rather than e eternity? No, Why not would at you? all. Uh, because wait, wait, first what? of all, mm -hmm. yeah, God never told us that we are going to in some way exist eternally. Um, however, what he did tell us 
were the consequences of bad behavior. And everything he had to tell us about that in the Torah was um, earth-based. Um, so, I mean, why would we focus on something that's essentially a later developed idea? I'm not saying it's false. I'm just saying it's, it's from a theological perspective, it's somewhat subjective, at least from a Jewish perspective. Of course, if you believe the Quran or the New Testament is the word of God, then this is why you believe that concept is God breathed, but it's not in our Torah. And God even tells us in Deuteronomy 28, 29, that the secret things, things that, that we didn't hear from him, right? That's for him to deal with. And only what he has revealed to us is for us and our children to do. Like telling us that, you know what? Keep laws, right? And he'll take care of things at the end. But don't focus on some other planet. Focus on this planet. Because we see this in the East, right? In the East, many people feel like, all right, if I don't do it in this life, I'll do it in the next life. And, you know, by definition, they never improve. But if you're an earthly minded person saying that, you know what, I have to build my children up uh, well, so they don't suffer, so they can live in a cleaner world, in a more peaceful world, right? I'm going to start a business, you know, Bob's and Sons, right? I mean, it seems like, I mean, history is more linear. It's, it's moving up right? instead of just circular that it doesn't really matter what you do because it's about the afterlife. I think it's a very, very destructive idea. Mm, yeah, I don't see it that way. But I mean, okay, I, I'd rather move on to something else. like Because um, there's something, we can go back and forth on that. But like, I think there's like bigger issues I'm under, like get to. Uh, so like, when, okay, because uh, when it comes to like God, the nature of God, Mm -hmm. um, I want to understand, like, if there are any differences between Judaism and Christianity. It's interesting because the nature of God is not so explicit in the Torah. Unfortunately, I mean, I really wish it was. Now, mm. Jews have a lot to say about the nature of God. It just doesn't literally appear in the Torah. From Kabbalists, Kabbalists believe that that there's ten emanations of God, and and those ten are split into more. It's called well, the ten they're called the Sefirot. Uh, uh, when they begin to split them further, they're called Partsufim and the Atsilut, and they, they've really done a lot more trying to dissect God philosophically than Christians have, right? However, anything they bring to the table about the nature of God is essentially all opinion, because if the Torah doesn't say it, then we're never going to truly know. Uh, so this is why I'm not so quick to attack a Christian, let's say, how most Jews are, because they believe that there's some sort of complex unity in the Godhead. I mean, maybe, maybe. I mean, it just doesn't appear like that in our Torah, right? However, because the average Jew includes rabbinic opinion alongside with the Torah, which I don't. I mean, I do regarding legal reasons, but not regarding metaphysical reasons. They're quick to call people heretics. I hate that word. I'd never use the word heresy, right? I mean, the only... The, the only individuals in Jewish life who were allowed to use the word min, kofar, apikoros were only, these are derogatory terms for, for um, sectarians and apostates. The only people who were allowed to use those terms are the men who sat in the Sanhedrin because they were the only ones able to adjudicate people uh, on the basis of teaching something that they prohibited. But nowadays, people, I mean, not just in the Jewish world, in the Muslim and Christian world, use the word heresy and apostate way too loosely. When the Bible itself is ambiguous about many notions of of the unity of God or the complex unity of God or who God is or what God isn't. And, you know, is God in some way limitless? It, I, you know, if the Bible doesn't say it regarding any metaphysical topic, I consider anything anyone has to say about it outside of the Bible as opinion literature. <clears throat> okay. Um I want to ask you about, uh, like, the Trinity, because um, I'm, I'm sure you're aware that Christians believe in the Trinity, that we believe that God is three divine persons and one being. No. Uh, do you believe that that is taught in the Old Testament? Uh, no. I mean, not three in particular. Again, does does the Jewish Bible paint God in some sort of sophisticated manner Regarding his unity, I would say so. In terms of, we really can't put our finger on it. Right? Judaism nowadays, philosophically, 
regarding who God is and who God isn't goes by one particular rabbi. His name is the Rambam. And wait, hold on, there's someone who wants to hop in, so I'm gonna. I don't know if it looks like a troll or not, but we'll see. Okay, uh, proletarian alien, I guess, you know, Kakilato Arish. Hello, how are you doing, Kamal? <laughs> oh, damn, you know how to speak it. Uh, I didn't expect that. But yeah, I just had a question about Judaism yeah. because usually when it comes to like, you know, the three Abrahamic religions, we always say that Christianity and Islam are the ones that usually, you know, invite people to convert and stuff like that. And honestly, this is the first time like I see um, a Jewish person actually um, inviting people to Judaism. And I was wondering, like, is this something that's um, just discouraged, like usually, or is it something that's allowed but not sought out? You know, I'm really curious. So colloquially, it's this, it's for sure discouraged. However, there's no source material that tells us to discourage Gentiles. It's completely cultural, meaning Jews used to proselytize before the Roman exile. So the Emperor Hadrian made it a crime in Rome for Jews to either... Uh, to, I mean, for Gentiles to convert to Judaism or Jews to look for converts. Not to mention that in, in the nations that we were exiled to, we also weren't allowed to encourage people to convert. Nowhere in Jewish law, in Jewish literature, does it tell us that we're not allowed to encourage people to convert. However, because we haven't done it for so long, we've begun to think that it's part of our religion. And um, yes, the average Jew is also shocked with what I do. The yeah. truth be told, I began doing this in Israel. I was an outreach worker in Hebrew University. I worked for some like Jewish outreach organization. And every time we had an event in, in Israel and Hebrew U, we actually had more Gentiles come than born Jews. And I'll say, but I don't know that in Israel, there are many overseas programs where there's a lot of Gentiles. And they seem to be more interested. I mean, well, I mean, it makes sense why. than the average unaffiliated Jew. So then... I went to a local rabbi who I already knew how he felt, right? I mean, this is um, like for the Jews listening who happen to know anything about Israel and Jerusalem. So he was the Rosh Hashiva of the Derech program of Or Sameach. His, his name is Rabbi Moshe Lazarus. To write me a letter, like basically saying there's, there's nothing wrong in Judaism with encouraging Jews to become Jewish. I mean, encouraging, encouraging Gentiles to become Jewish as long as you focus on Jews as well or probably even first. Um, so for the last, I don't know, 18 years, I've been encouraging Gentiles not just to become Jewish. I also perform conversions for people who otherwise couldn't convert. Like we go to India every year. Uh, well, I mean, for the last two years, we've been going to India. We're, uh, trying to support an existing community in Pakistan now. Uh, yeah, but I typically tell people to go to their local Orthodox synagogue and, uh, inquire about conversion there. That makes a lot of sense, actually. You know, like, personally, in my own experience, I've always been really interested in Kabbalah. And I've always wanted to, like, you know, learn about divinity from multiple different aspects that we can, you know, digest as humans, not just having it as, like, an abstract idea of what the divine is. And, you know, I've talked to many Jewish people, and they've always told me, like, different answers about it. Some told me that it is completely closed. Others said, you know, as long as you're respectful, you can access it. But what I've learned so far is that basically it's become a cultural thing to be protective of it because a lot of Christians have used that, you know, to turn it into a tool to convert Jews into actually becoming Christian through their own mysticism and spirituality. Right. What do you think about this? Like, is it something that is orthodox? Like, is it a rule to not allow Gentiles to look into Kabbalah? Well, there's a rule that says that Gentiles really shouldn't even study Torah. It says, Goyo Torah Chayev Misa, that a Gentile who preoccupies himself with the study of Torah is liable with a death penalty. But that's only if not Gentiles who are studying it to convert, but Gentiles who are studying it to in some way create a religion for themselves. Um, I do not teach Kabbalah, although, I mean, I know Kabbalah pretty well. I mean, not I'm not a Kabbalist, uh, but I've been yeah. teaching on the topic, at least the dangers of Kabbalah for many years. The average Jew, it's true, the average Jew believes in Kabbalah. I would say 98%. Um, they don't identify as Kabbalists, but they believe in Kabbalistic sources like the Zohar 
and um, Hasidic sources. Um, well, Hasidic Judaism is really a form of, uh, I mean, it's Kabbalistic Judaism for the Ashkenazi world. Right? Be I see. Because Kabbalah, in terms of like Lurianic Kabbalah, uh, was from the Middle East, the Turkish, from the Sephardi world. But when it entered the Ashkenazi world, it, it became known as Hasidut, as Hasidic Judaism. So, um, yes, the understanding is, at least according to one rabbi, that one very influential rabbi, his name was, his name was the Rashba. So according to the Rashba, um, even a Jew is not supposed to study Kabbalah to the age of 40. And it's not yeah. someone who just turned 40 who never studied before, but someone who's been religious their whole life and they've reached a certain level of, of uh, knowledge. And now in the age of 40, like, do they expose them to the Zohar and Kabbalistic texts? The average Jew doesn't really believe that. Well, uh, groups like Chabad, the Hasidic groups do not believe that because Chabad, they teach Kabbalah to kids. I mean, they have a channel called Kabbalah Tunes. Right? I mean, I'm not saying they're breaking down Kabbalistic concepts, but uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, in terms of, of uh, if they're giving a class on their book, let's say the Tanya, they don't ask kids to, to exit. So yeah. um, I think that Kabbalah, or essentially what's found in the Zohar and the works of the Arizal who made the Zohar popular, uh, is opinion literature, right? And um, by me saying that is equivalent to me burning it in the eyes of, of Kabbalistic Jews because they believe it's holy. I mean, they call it the Zohar HaKadosh, the holy Zohar. They believe the Zohar was given on Mount Sinai along with the regular Torah. Uh, so they yeah. really embellish it. And they even have adopted practices that appear in Kabbalah into daily Jewish ritualistic practice into halakha, which they're not supposed to do. And yeah, uh, yeah I don't know. Hold yeah, on. that makes a lot of sense. I really appreciate you taking the time to have me on. No problem. No problem. All right. Have a good day, man. It'll be well. All right. I think we have some Jews here who came to fight back. So go for it. Okay, well, when you're talking about Kabbalah, you're mm -hmm. totally right. You have to be, I think, 40, married, unfortunately, like a man. You have to be, like, already versed in everything. Um, but I think you just said, like, something about um, they. somebody thinks that it's um, was given on Har Sinai. Mm -hmm. But for oral Torah, we believe, like, Orthodox Jews at least believe that everything was given including the written and the oral on Har Sinai. But the reason why now it's written down later is because it used to be that Moshe Rabbeinu would teach Yehoshua. Yehoshua is going to teach everybody else. But since we were in diaspora and everything, like, mm -hmm. and it wasn't supposed to be written down. But then we are in diaspora, and that's why everything got written down in the Gemara, because the rabbis all sat down and were like, okay, it seems mm -hmm. like people aren't really learning things anymore. The way that we are passing things down by mouth isn't working, and now we have to write things write things down. So that's why the Gemara is the oral law, but really it was still given at Har Sinai, and okay. that includes Kabbalah. Okay, so not all Jews believe that the whole oral law was given on one side. I said Orthodox Jews. No, no. I said not all Orthodox Jews believe that. I mean, for example, like, you don't believe that, that lighting Hanukkah candles was given on Mount Sinai, or like reading the Megillah was given on Har Sinai. Like on Har Sinai, and those are, those are also parts of the oral law, right? Right, but you be we believe that they existed because since God is infinite and he knows more than we, but, and he exists at all times in every place, it's possible that he already, he had, he already to, taught Moshe Rabbeinu about these things that didn't even happen yet. All right. So not every Jew believes that. Like Hasidic Jews may believe that, but the average, I mean, for example, the Rambam didn't believe that. Right. I mean, the Rambam even says, and what bracha do we make? Uh, oh, there's this notion of the seven brachot, like the, uh, the, the, like the seven rabbinic mitzvot. And when you light Hanukkah candles, you say, Asher Kedishanu B'mitzvotah B'tzivanu. And then the Rambam asks, how can you say that God sanctified us with his commandments and commanded us to light Hanukkah candles mm -hmm. when Hanukkah didn't exist back then? I'm just telling you what the Rambam's opinion is. And so he right. says, because God commanded us to listen to the base and the Gadol, the Sanhedrin, right? That by listening to them, it's like listening to God. Not all Jews believe that the whole oral law was given on Mount Sinai. There's something called Halacha Lemoshe Misinai, that there's some laws that were given on Mount Sinai. The Rambam limits it to 30 laws, right? There are some Jews who believe that the whole thing was given. I, 
I don't believe that, right? Like I said, I mean, there's here, there's something called takanas and gezeras, right? But so a takana is a positive rabbinic command, positive in the sense that it tells you to do something, and a gezera is is a rabbinic prohibition that's negative, right? I mean, it tells you not to do something. These are all things that were developed by the court. The court developed them. Later on, I think that the dumbification occurred when they were trying to teach children, you know, the breakdown on how halaha functions, that it's easier to teach a child that everything was given in Har Sinai, and this is where you have to keep it. But this is not where we keep halacha. The reason we keep halacha is because in Parshat Shoftim, that we have a mitzvah of lo sasor. Well, so lo sasor is the command of not straying from the right or to the left of, of what the court uh, instructs us. The Beis Agadol, the Sanhedrin, they had many different names. The Anshi Knesset, the Gadola. Uh, so what you're saying is true. There's many people who believe that, but not all Orthodox Jews believe that the whole Gemara was given on Mount Sinai. Right. I think for every halacha, I think I learned that there is... For every halacha, there are 49 different ways to, of interpreting it that go either or away. So that's why really there are so many different interpretations for things. Yeah, it's, Hello. Yeah, it's um, I mean, 70 faces of the Torah, they say. Yeah, that's a medrash. I mean, it, it's it's like, it's a legend. I'm not saying it's necessarily true, you know, but everyone nowadays, I mean, goes either by the Rambam or Shulchan or I, I don't know. Mishnabura. Okay, uh, yeah, go ahead. I have one question. You say Judaism is better. Yeah. Okay, how is Judaism better? You see this little kid, he's my great grandfather and he got killed mm -hmm. from the from the Germans because he was a Jew. So why is being a Jew good? Okay. So it's actually a good question. Anyone was targeting Jewish people in the last five hundred years, it wasn't because they were keeping Torah. Or, 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 you know, like guarding the Sabbath or wearing boxes on their heads, first of all. But the idea okay. that the nations of the world are going to hate us no matter what is not a Torah principle, by the way. It says that the nations hate us when we do things wrong. And I'm just telling you what the Torah says. The idea that if you become Jewish, by definition, people are going to hate you is not true. Okay. It's your job as a Jewish person to police your people, to make sure that people are not misrepresenting Judaism. And, and the world. Yeah, yeah. So... But this idea that Jewish people can't do anything wrong, you're not going to get that in this show. Okay? They do it pretty well. I mean, they, they, they control, like, actually, they police, as you said, a lot of the world. I mean, they police, like, they're trying to police the entire Middle East, I know, um, really, know, Palestine, Israel. I'm not speaking for the, I mean, state of Israel. I support the state of Israel, not from a religious perspective, from a secular perspective. Like, most Orthodox Jews are not, like, Zionists, necessarily. I mean, they're yeah. not anti zionist Yeah, I'm an Orthodox Jew, and I love... Eretz Yisrael in the land of Israel, but politically, I don't know if I stand, I, first of all, I don't know enough about the politics of Israel, and like when people always equate every single Jew with Israel, it's not nice. I mean, they're... No, I mean, they're doing a good job with controlling, like policing the world. I mean, they, they have a well, lot of... Policing the world, you know how, the big media. Is, how big is Eretz Yisrael? Can you tell me what state is the same size as Israel? You want to tell yeah. that's the whole uh, state? I'd say New Jersey. Jersey. Yeah, yep, New, Jersey. New Jersey. They're not policing the whole world. That's a Jewish state. No, no, no. State no. Right now. I mean, Sorry, I'm uh, He's not talking it... about Palestine right now, though. Yeah, I know. I'm just saying they, I mean, Jews control, like, you know, the banks and the, you know, like, the media, That's things like, like that. And good, and good for them. What is wrong with the control? Yeah, the I banks? agree. But because, I, mean, because... I think what's not okay is your profile picture. I come from Europe. That looks pretty offensive. Why? Because it's my great grandfather and he's a Jew. Well, he liked to paint too, and that's the problem. Huh? No, no, what? no. Oh, wait, wait. It's, it's, well, that picture <laughs> is Mr. Shekel Gruber. What? <laughs> I'm pretty sure it is. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. no, Can you hear me? Who is that? Anyways, it doesn't matter. Okay. I don't think Jews control the banks, but for sure, Jews are disproportionately represented in, in higher academia. Um, academia, they're hyper-educated and they're they're overly represented amongst Nobel Prize winners because um, because they're, they're smart, hyper-educated. You know, but I don't think that has anything to do with religious Judaism, right? There's oh. like to the Jewish people, and there's a religious aspect to the Jewish people. There oh, aren't prize winners who are like Shomer Shabbat and keep kosher. I'm just telling you. I mean, the, ah, so you, you are talking only like Judaism, like the religion? Only, only. I mean, this uh. is not uh, now. There's an ethnic component to the Jewish people, 
but that's not what I'm talking about here, right? Okay. Uh, yeah. Now, if you convert to Judaism and you happen to live in a Jewish community, you yourself will be part of that component. Uh, but um, if an ethnic Jew doesn't believe in God, he's not really important to God necessarily. I mean, he's still Jewish, but he's Jewish. Like Karl Marx was Jewish. Trotsky was Jewish. You know, I don't know. The Gloria Steinem. Uh, they're, they're, they're just, uh, I mean, Jewish by accident. They're just ethnically Jewish, not like right, halakhically really? Jewish. Well, they're halakhically uh, Jewish. If, they're not religiously if, Jewish. I mean, it depends. If it's according to halakha and orthodox law, then it's only... If your father's Jewish, like, there's no such thing as, like, half Jewish. People are like, oh, we're half Jewish, we're half Jewish. There's, like, you're Jewish, and then you can be ethnically Jewish, like, genetically. But her religion and halakha, it goes by the mother. So, like, maybe somebody is ethnically Jewish. You can't take that away from them. Like, that's their Jewish identity. Not religiously Jewish. Does that make sense? Yeah. No, it doesn't. But I have a... All right, go ahead. I have Sorry. A... I have a question, and it's really kind of not in topic, so I'll just ask the question, and I'll have the host ask answer it. No, no, no. It, it's really a historical Jewish question, So, and I'll have you answer it, and I'll just get off and listen to your answer. But my question was about King Herod mm -hmm. in the Bible. Yes. You know, the one who wanted the baby Jesus and the one who wanted, uh, I mean, who had John the Baptist. I'm just orienting you to the character I'm speaking of right. who wanted John to have Baptist head cut off and all that. Now he was, he was an, he was from the nation of Edom, mm -hmm. but he was King at that time. He was over Judea. Right. All right. Now he had a style of Judaism where the lineage followed the mother. This came from King Herod. Uh, and there's some other factors. And I just what my question is, and I'll get off and listen. Is there any remnant of his style of Judaism, which because he confessed to be a Jew and he did his darn I hear I hear Edler speaking. What are you playing on the flag ground? The magic Who's playing that? Who's what? Wait, I hear, I, what I heard that, some, why are you playing that? I heard some German guy speaking. Background. I don't know. Well, that, that's not that's not coming from me. I'm in a room by myself. It's still Wait, quiet. Is it the host or the guy whose name is I come from Europe. Come again? That's my question. I was asking the host, what about King Herod? What do what do history tell you from, from the Jewish perspective about King Herod? And is there any remnants of his style of 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 Judaism sure. that exists today. Now, okay. I think that's a fair question. I'll just come off and I'll listen to your answer. All right. I'll tell you, for the average Jew, can't speak much on this topic, but because I wasn't always Jewish, I converted to Judaism 20 something years ago. I know some, a little bit about King Herod. King Herod wasn't made king by Jews, by the way. He was made king by Rome. And there's a story in the Talmud where he tried to perform one of the offerings, either in Sukkot or something like this, and then everyone was started yelling at him uh, with the verse that says that you shall not, you shall not appoint someone uh, as, as ruler over you who's not from amongst your brothers. And at this point, he started crying. And I believe the rabbis, I believe it was either him or his, like, or his son, and the rabbis sympathized with him. But it wasn't that he walked around thinking that what made you Jewish was having a Jewish father. He was supposedly from the Idumeans. So the Idumeans were the Edomites who were forcibly converted, I think, by, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, by um, John Hyrcanus. Uh, in the time of the Hasmoneans. Um, but he wasn't a religious Jew. He, uh, he was very influential because he helped restyle or redecorate the temple. Um, or I guess refinish the temple, but I don't know if that answers your question. In terms of his style of Judaism, I never knew he had a style. He wasn't deeply religious to begin with. He was responsible for killing a lot of the sages. But uh, yeah, anyways. All right, well, people are welcome to come back if they like. Yeah, so 
the type of Judaism that I teach is more of a Rambam style Judaism, a more rationalistic form of Judaism, typically typically taught by Temanim, by Baladim. Baladim are known, or these style of Yemenites are known for understanding Judaism through the lenses of the Rambam. The truth be told, at the time of the Rambam, everybody viewed Judaism by his lenses to a certain extent. I mean, he had his uh, opponents like the Ravid Enon and, and even uh, I think the Chachamim of Aleppo I had an issue with him for a while. But he was and still is probably the most influential rabbi of the time. Most people who walk around condemning Christianity, they're usually doing it through the lenses of Maimonides and through his statements of what God is, what God isn't, how one can't limit God. That being said, Maimonides lived before the Zohar was written, before Kabbalah existed. Now, people who believe in Kabbalah, like the lady who was speaking before, many of them believe that it was given to Mount Sinai. So clearly Mount Sinai predated the Rambam. Many of them believe, as the Zohar itself states, that it was written by the Rashbi, by Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, who also existed before the Rambam, although the book first appeared in 1270 of the Common Era in Spain by an individual named Rabbi um, Rabbi Moshe de Leon. So I'm just telling you my style of Judaism. Uh, it's it's more prevalent in Israel. In America, most Jews are cookie cutter. Welcome, Sophia. I totally forgot what I was going to say before because I <laughs> I got distracted. What I was going to say is your whole your whole life is like correct me if I'm wrong. You're asking people to be Jewish. You're telling them that Judaism is better than other religions. I okay. mean, I don't disagree. I happen to think Not it's right. Yet. Not necessarily that I'm telling them to become Jewish. I, first, the main thing I'm doing here is letting them know that you could become Jewish. The average person who hops in this live is not familiar with this notion, especially the average Muslim. So that's a talking point. That's a tactic of the average Muslim. They're like, Judaism is only for the Jew and Islam is universal. God, in some way, endorsed Islam to bring the world closer to him. And my point is that Judaism was universal from its inception. We accepted converts at Harsinai because it says that the heir of Rav, the mixed multitude, stood alongside the Hebrews and said Nasif and Ishma and accepted the Torah and all this stuff. And, uh, I mean, you know, Ruth, uh, Yitro, uh, yeah, I mean, conversion is a thing in the Torah. So Right, 1,000%. I am happens to be, I am a convert. I'm an Orthodox convert. Um, I converted as a child, and then as an adult, I reconverted um just to be just just to be sure before I got married because it wasn't very clear about my conversion as a kid. So obviously converts are one thousand percent accepted in Judaism, and it actually you know it's a halacha or it's a mitzvah rather that when somebody con converts you should be extra nice to them as if they're like an orphan or a widow and a convert. Even before, uh, right? Optimistic. No, but that's that's where I disagree with you. I'm just gonna say where I disagree. It's hmm. Non-Jews only have seven laws that they have to keep. And if they keep those laws, we don't really have like clear cut concept of what's going to happen after death, but they only have to keep those seven laws. Don't kill, don't, don't murder or whatever, like easy peasy. You've got this seven laws. The Jews, on the other hand, we have 613 laws we're supposed to keep. I mean, not all of them are applicable to today, but Generally, that's what you say, 613. And what is the reason why in Orthodox Judaism, we don't reach out to people and it's a closed religion and we don't ask people to convert to Judaism. We don't say, come convert and be Jewish. It's not like Christianity where you'll have missionaries knocking on the door and trying to make you see the light of Christ and all these Christian people who are like, like believe in Christ and like shoving it in your face kind of. It's a closed religion. Why? Because it's easier to not be Jewish. It's a kindness. We don't we don't want you to have to keep all these laws when you already have it easy, but okay. you should, it's great if they believe Judaism is right. You can see the beauty in it and how it's the truth, but you don't have to become Jewish in order to do that. You can be the best Gentile you can be. You're making a lot of points here, but I just want to, because I'm going to forget like half the stuff okay. what you mentioned. Okay. So I'm familiar with the notion of the seven laws of no. However, from a rabbinic perspective, there's an aspect of the seven laws of Noah that that are typically not taught. Let me ask you, what happens to someone who breaks the seven Noahide laws? Assuming we're back in Israel and there's a Sanhedrin and a court and a priesthood and a king, right? What happens if you break any of the seven Noahide laws? I don't know, nothing because we're not in charge of them, no. <laughs> they are decapitated. I mean, this is the halacha. Everything I say, trust but verify, okay? According to the Rambam, uh, Hilchos Malachim of the Rambam, he says anyone who breaks any one of the Sheva Mitzvahs, Chayv Misa. I mean, 
Like he's killed with only one witness and with no pre-warning. We have something called hasra in Judaism. We have to warn you first uh, in order for you right. to look- do you think so, that's over? That's been overridden, though, because of, there's also the law that we have to follow the law of the land, and the law of the land is you can't just go around killing people willy sure. nilly. No, nowadays, no, no, for sure not. But this gives you an idea of what Hazal. I mean, the people who developed these systems, what they had in mind when they were offering the seven Noahide laws, that it wasn't something for you to aspire to. Every Gentile by definition, is a ben or bat noach, whether they accept it or not, okay? If they lived or were traversing, traversing through the land of Israel, they'd be liable and adjudicated against the seven laws of Noah, okay? So there's nothing for them to accept. Um, the goal is to, in some way, go from a lower holier level to a higher holier level, you know? So the opinion that the, in Hebrew is the chasidim motolam, like the righteous of the nations, get a chelik on olam is just a medrash. We don't know this for sure because the Torah doesn't say it. I mean, the Torah, what the closest thing we have to a Noahide in the Torah is a Ger Toshev. But it never says what they actually get. The Torah, from a, the perspective of the Chumash of God's word, God only has one standard. Okay. For sure, the rabbis teach that if someone keeps the seven Noahide laws, they're like the high priest, and they embellish the idea. But they would never say that keeping seven laws is greater than keeping 613 laws. Whether, you know, I mean, it's it's more opportunities uh, to perfect your character. You have, I mean, honoring your parents is not one of the seven Noahide laws. Fighting evil is not one of the, I mean, seven Noahide laws. I mean, it's right, hard. To- but it's easy, <laughs> easier. Life, I'm just saying, if nobody, one of my, if my parents didn't convert me as a kid, I always imagine what would my life be like? It would be easier. I would, of course I would, not. so much easier. <laughs> that is probably the worst representation for a Torah lifestyle. Uh, I mean, for you to no, say. No, because I think the fact that it's hard, you know, when you're working out, you work out your muscles and it you have to push, push where it hurts or it's not like it's supposed to be hard. Life is supposed to be hard. The things that matter in life come with difficulty. But if I didn't know that and I didn't know my okay. Torah knowledge or anything, I wouldn't know what I'm missing out. And I don't know. I feel like. I don't want to tell people what they're missing out on because then they're going to make their lives harder and it's going to be like, I wait, wait, know. wait. All right. So, I mean, it's not making any sense because you know, now that you do know better, I mean, for example, well, let me test your sincerity here. If you found out tomorrow, all right, that the conversion they did when you were younger was, was you know, puzzle. I mean, it's not kosher and you didn't reconvert or even like the, the basin that converted you, the guys were related, and that makes it void in this and that. Would you reconvert to Judaism or remain a Gentile? Well, I'm married with a kid, so I'd probably... I, I believe in Judaism, so I would. But I had this conversation uh, with myself because before I got married, before I had a kid, they told me your conversion may not be kosher, you may not be Jewish. I thought, thank God all of the things that... All the Neveros that I did were void. <laughs> Great. Man, That's this, what I thought, really. And I can so start it fresh. Jewish, at least for you. I mean, assuming you weren't married. I mean, it's a schut. I mean, it's a it's it's a merit to be Jewish over then like just keeping seven plain laws, right? Right. I don't know. Maybe See, what, I'd go and I'd go be with my biological family that are not Jewish, and I'd be able to like. I you don't can know. Do that too. I mean, you just kind of eat their food, you know, but you could bring your own food and your own dishes. No, I don't. I don't hold that. I like converse with them so much just because it's, you're no you're not there's all these halachos like i follow strict orthodox halachos and one of the halachos is you're not really supposed to dine with non-jews unless you have separate placemats it's like a whole thing that's not i mean you could dine in the same table okay and especially like if you're related because it's supposed to be right you know i mean for the sake of marriage you might end up marrying the person it's 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 not an issue i mean jews dine with non-jews all the time i mean i mean hopefully i wouldn't marry it like it's since I, the the way that I live is so strict. If that's the problem, like if I marry like a non-Jewish person, yes, since I'm a woman, our kids would still be Jewish, but it would be so conflicting for them to grow up with people with two different, like different lives. <laughs> no, say that it's better to be Jewish than not. That's what that your your goal is saying that it's better to be Jewish than not. Obviously, and the reason you remain a Jew, assuming you weren't married, is because you see the value that that trying to live out. 613 mitzvot brings to your life versus only keeping 
really six laws because the seventh law is there. You know, Dinan is there to enforce like the previous six laws. And they're all negative laws with the exception of the seventh law, right? That's how you speak to a dog. Don't do this. Don't do that. But there's nothing to aspire to, right? You know, it, it, you know it's better to be Jewish. It, it's a talking point. I mean, it's really, you know, to be politically correct to say that we believe all paths lead to God, it's not true. It's not true. It's only an opinion amongst the rabbis. 50% of the rabbis believed that if a Gentile kept the seven Noahide laws, that he would get a share in the world to come. 50% of them did it. The Rambam believed that they did, and this is why most people think so, but it's not a 100% thing. If someone's looking for the most secure way, the most secure way to believe, to please the God in Torah, it's better for he or she to convert to Judaism. If they really want to be certain from a biblical perspective, right? We're sort of talking about religion in terms of, I mean, certainty, whatever. Um, so Right, that's... okay, right. You're totally right. People, if they learn about Judaism, they should go and they should convert and it's great and we accept converts and they are 1,000% Jewish. But isn't there a halacha that you're not supposed to go out and ask people to be Jewish? Like, there's a reason there's why. Halacha. I can't, I've been doing this long enough. I've debated enough rabbis. There is no such halacha. Everything I say, trust but verify. But come back tomorrow or something. Uh, okay. Ask your rabbi, is there I'm going to ask my rabbi what he thinks yeah, yeah. about it. Because what I've learned is that if someone wants to be Jewish, I, that's why I have a problem with my page. Sometimes I share things about Judaism and I'm scared. Maybe somebody's going to see it and I'm going to be the reason that they convert to Judaism. I don't want to be the reason they convert okay. to Judaism. They have to come well, to it on their own. Okay, I'm going to place a challenge before you. If for some reason there is no such halacha, would you then start possibly encouraging people you think are sincere to keep on going further and convert to Judaism? No, because I, 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 don't, I, I don't believe that way. Even, even if, there, if there was a halacha that was telling me that it, it's, it's a mitzvah to go, maybe. But just to tell me that it's not, not allowed, but... I, I've got other things. I've got other hashtaglas in my life. All right. I deal with myself first and my family. Then don't worry about other people. Do you have any siblings? I do have siblings. Do they convert to Judaism? Um, yes. You're, oh, friends, you were converted as a child. Right. So, you know, so my family didn't all convert to Judaism, by the way. And I grew up sort of like a street kid. And I knew girls that would basically sleep with you like if you bought them a happy meal, right? Girls that, that, I mean, I always thought that it would benefit the world if if religious women would go into like poor communities and teach them on the values of like, you know, sniut and modesty, whatever. Um, because in this is just one uh, of many areas where living a Jewish existence will actually make your life better, especially women, notions like Sherman Agia. Uh, I mean, just you know, precious, right? I mean, I think that's how you say abstinence in Hebrew, right? Uh, um, th how does, I mean, holding that back when people are constantly just in a cycle of, of, of just living out the, the consequences for bad decisions, how can you live with yourself knowing that you know better? You know the laws of modesty, of, of family purity and all these things, and you believe that the mitzvot, could change lives for the better, right? Because you do believe in Kiruv, I'm sure you do, right? And you do believe that if a secular birthright kid in Israel would come to Torah, that it would make their life better. But for some reason, if you found out after that that person was not Jewish, right, uh, then you would change your mind. It doesn't really make sense ethically. Here, I don't know. I'm going to ask my Rav and see what he says because I follow my Rav. Um, but as of now... I disagree with reaching out to this one. My statement before I log off, I need to go make dinner. <laughs> is is I, I disagree with the reaching out to people and asking them or telling them that Judaism is better and that they should be Jewish. As of now, that is my statement. But I'm gonna consult with somebody who knows more than me because I am not a rabbi. <laughs> All right, you're a Zionist, right? Um, I don't know enough about Zionism or Israel personally. Like I don't know enough. I love Eretz Yisrael, but I don't know enough about their politics to be able to say, oh, I'm a Zionist. I've never I learned them in depth. The but if someone doesn't love the state of Israel and supports BDS and all this stuff. Of course I don't try... support BDS. I don't no. support anyone's full hate like that. But... No, I got it. But would you try to correct that person? 
Uh, and- um, no, because people, I find that people from those types of movements, um, even if I say, oh, I'm not explicitly like for the politics of Israel, they don't, they don't have their ears open to listen. So there's no point in arguing with them. It's just a waste of my time and my energy and people who are really dead set on that. As far as I know, they're, it's, if they're going to just, they're just going to keep arguing. I'm not, average, I'm not going to get through to them. But the average Jew on TikTok spends all day defending Israel, um, like bringing down the facts of the whole Palestinian Israeli uh, um, feud. Um, isn't that itself a form of proselytizing? Um, n- no, because that is more political. And I like to think that it's a little bit, it is together Jews and Israel. You can't separate it. It's called the Jewish state, but it's not completely together. I don't know if that makes sense. Like, well, marketing is a form of that process. is political versus that has religion like entwined in it, but it's political and political is separate. So, Edit. I mean, I know politics has nothing to do with religion regarding the state of Israel, but an attempt to put people on a correct path is not foreign to Jews, right? I mean, it may be foreign to religious people today, like thinking that we have, you know, that a Gentile could believe whatever he wants, um, except when they start to harm us, i.e., you know, I mean, supporting BDS, Antifa, or, or the Palestinians, right? But for some reason, regarding religion, we feel that we have nothing to offer the rest of the world, right? You know, but politics, we do. So Jews are in the business of saying what's good for them is good for others. But just I, when it comes I, to religion, I have no place talking politics to anybody or telling them what to do. No, it's, I'm not telling you. I'm trying to make a comparison. Right. But I don't think it's as comparable as you think. I hear what you're saying, but it's not like, for me personally, I'm like, I'm like very on machlokas about it right now, recently. Fine. All right. All right. I, I'm going to make some tofu. <laughs> Bye. Okay. Have fun. All right. Fine. Guys, I tried. I tried. Uh, but she was very respectful. And that's that's uh, the way we like it here. All right. Nice dialogue. This is how people learn the most. Truth be told, I know she's going to talk to a rabbi. I mean, the rabbi probably says something negative about me. But if he's honest, he'll acknowledge it's true. There's nothing in Judaism prohibiting it. This idea that all roads lead to Rome or Jerusalem is not a Jewish notion. Okay. Okay. It may be a Jewish notion today because I guess what Jews do today speaks for Judaism. Right. But it's not a Torah principle and it's not a principle in the Talmud. Okay. In, in, by Chazal, by our sages, there's actually more sources to encourage Jews to consider Judaism than, than there are to feel an obligation to ethnic Jews because this this whole movement essentially invented by Chabad in the in, in uh, when did they invent it? Whatever. Of reaching out of Shlichut, they call it, I guess Ashkenazim call it Kiruv, to reach out to unaffiliated Jews does not exist in the Torah and it, it does not exist by Chazal in the Talmud. Okay? This is new. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, right? But only because, you know, only because <laughs> There's actually sources that Jews are proselytized. There's no source that a Jew felt an obligation to someone who happened to have an Abrahamic pedigree to bring them back. This is a new thing. Okay. Uh, but yes, I'm also for reaching out to unaffiliated Jews just because I'm for reaching out to anyone who's far and bringing them closer. Just because I have to share a planet with these people. Duh. If, <laughs> if I don't impact them, they're going to end up impacting me and my kids. So, I mean, just from a logical perspective. You can't come against this this idea, you know, and it's not a new idea either. But please, if you're knowledgeable like this lady was, please come on here. She will speak to Chabad Rabbi who enforce her existing position. I mean, they may enforce it, but if she's a searcher, and I assume she is, she's going to ask for some sources. And this is why. I mean, I debated a few Chabad rabbis. Go on my channel, TorahJudaism.org. Under, I think under media, there's a tab called Debates. And I have over 170 debates with uh, Christians, Jews, uh, atheists, Muslims. And this is how we do it, guys. So, yeah, I'm in the business of saying what's good for me is good for others because I find it beneficial. Heck, I just saw John Wick yesterday, by the way. It's okay. You see, I'm proselytizing John Wick. You know what's better than John Wick? Cocaine Bear. You got to watch that movie. Cocaine Bear. You'll thank me later. You see, there's a lot of things I like. Lasagna. I like lasagna, right? I, I mean, as a Jew, you're stuck with the meatless. 
lasagna, but I proselytize even what I eat. And we all do it. Oh, here you go. Christ is Lord. You know, that's not very Christ-like. Okay, black Jews, what's your thoughts? I think black Jews do exist. Do I believe the Jews were specifically black? No, I do not. Do I believe they were specifically white? I do not either. It is necessary to make it difficult for a resident to convert. What is it saying? Uh, open a set table. I don't know what you mean. There's no law that says to make it difficult uh, for someone that you know is, is sincere. God only recognized one religion and his son, Jesus, and no grace. Okay, all right. Now, you're writing creed now. This is, uh, you know, okay, Jesus is the only salvation. It's more creed. Um, I think this app is, like, messing up. Welcome, Miss Imus. Hi. Hi. Well, there was a radio show host, uh, talk show host named Imus. Remember? Imus in the morning. Oh, no. I've never heard of that. Yeah. I mean, he made some, like, racist comment or something, and he lost his show. Mm. Uh, maybe 15 years ago. Imus. I mean, he was up there like Howard Stern. Imus out of New York. You know? Oh. I'll have to look that up. I've never heard of that. There you go. I mean, you're appropriating his name. <laughs> Possibly. Okay, Lewis, eight kids. Was yes. that eight kids or you eat children? <laughs> no, I have eight kids, man. I have eight kids. Yes, I see the apron. Yes, I don't know if that means that you cut. Uh, them. I mean, you're like uh, uh, Gretel. Yeah. Nah, yeah. <clears throat> All right, so what's up? What's nah, the word? Nah, the boy. What is the good word? That's the thing. Mm. Uh, I guess we're here to figure that out. I'll, uh, you know, there's something so powerful about honesty. It, if for some reason I didn't know anything about religion or I didn't know anything about a specific feud, the first thing I do is see which side was lying. Or at least try to find out which side was defaming the other side unjustly or um, just giving over false information. And that would be the first step into finding out which side is correct. Uh, because mm -hmm. I don't think evil individuals hold truth as a value. So I encourage everyone in anything, in religion and politics on TikTok, to decide who's correct is who just hops in and starts calling people names? Who gives over incorrect information? Of course, you have to research to find out if it's true or not. Take notes. I mean, if you really want to find out what's true, take notes. Who is, is tactics? Who's using tactics that logically make no sense? You know, like saying that that um, I don't know Moses was a Muslim, <laughs> right? Uh, I'm saying Moses was a Muslim, but just like Muhammad was a Christian, right? I mean, submitting if submitting to God makes you a Muslim then believing in Jesus makes you a Christian. So, I mean, it's, <laughs> we have to be extremely painfully honest. And that's, that's uh, at least, I'm not a saint. I'm far from being a saint. But at least when it comes to religion, I'll give you the uncut, you know, Pablo Escobar, kitty cat. So that's how we do it. It's the, and that's got to be like, no one truly knows, right? Right. Truly. No one knows. Yeah, nobody knows. Well, we all we all have our, uh, our beliefs and uh and a, do you know what I mean? What 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 he is right to you in it? What right. sits right with you? Uh, do you know what I mean? No. Uh, if you the unknowing as well, if it, if it do you know what I mean? When you hear it, you know, right? Uh, I don't know what that means, but everybody does right in his own eyes. It's not what you feel or what makes you feel good uh it's what actually does good so wow. you really have to ask yourself what's what's the most ethical belief system or what other religion made my religion ethical right like i would say judaism made christianity and islam ethical because the ethics of both of those religions are found in what we call the torah um but yes if if for some reason your religion encouraged you uh not to be a decent person and you felt like, well, even though God is telling me to do this, I feel wrong about it, then perhaps you should start looking into another religion. Yeah. yeah. 100.
but uh all right let's see we, we got uh yeah these faces look familiar welcome mev false or me how you doing man chilling you know how it is slicing and dicing. I, I, I talked to you about uh maybe about, about about a month ago you were on my live Okay. Oh, 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 I think, yes. I mean, you're like a very extremely tolerant Muslim. I don't right? know what that means, but I'll take it as a compliment. No, it's a compliment. <laughs> it's a, I mean, I think it's you. Uh, um, or maybe it's not you. I, I, I know you were on my live, um, and I forgot what we were talking about, but um, this is the first time I'm on, on your live. Oh, well, welcome. Welcome. So, so... I, I don't agree with your um, your statement that calling Moses Muslim is like, you know, um, what did you say? Calling Muhammad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, Muslim is basically the one who submits to God. So Right, and a Christian is someone who believes in Christ, right? Christian is somebody who believes in, I don't know, <laughs> I, 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 don't, I shouldn't say, but just because we believe in the Messiah... And that doesn't have to be Jesus, by the way. Right. And only because we submit to God, what does it mean that we believe in the Quran or Muhammad? So so we use this term for ourselves. Muslim is the one who submits to God. So, And that's why we consider all the prophets Muslim. No, I know. Yeah, but that's from an Islamic perspective. That means you could say that amongst yourselves, but you can't say that to a Christian or a Jewish person who's not convinced of what your Bible says. Right? If you ask a Christian... Uh, what was Moses? Well, Moses belonged to the Torah covenant, right? I mean, he had a covenant with God to keep God's law, right? But I don't think a Christian has the audacity to tell a Jewish person that Moses was a Christian. Even though they may believe it, by the way, because they believe that even Moses was in some way awaiting the Christ, right? I mean, this is what they believe in, you know, but it's, it's kind of a tactic uh, to win over weak-willed individuals. Who feel like really jesus was a muslim moses was a muslim maybe i should become a muslim also the truth is the islamic rendition of moses was a muslim and the islamic rendition of jesus was also a muslim now yes i understand the term muslim just means someone who submits to god but that's not what you mean when you're saying this to someone who doesn't know anything about the bible you're basically saying that if you become muslim you would be of the same religion that jesus and moses uh were a part of that is actually true According to Islam, again, here, look. No, no, no. See, see. According to, they were all monotheistic. They all believed in one God. Yeah, but they it's not, all only because you believe in one God doesn't mean that you worship the same God, right? Okay, are, are we? Are we? I didn't. This is this is a new one to me. Are you saying that Jewish uh, people worship some other God than yeah. us? Yes. Okay. Uh, who is that God? He's. The God that gave over the commandments in our Bible, which are different than the commandments. No, no, no. Your Bible. Okay, so you're saying the one who created you is different from the one who created me? No, no, no. Oh. I believe that there's only one God. However, the rendition of, of your God can't be the same as my God because the way we know who we worship is what that God expects from us to do. So our God gave us some specific commandments and your God, gave you different commandments. So it can't be the same God. So, so you believe in multiple gods? No, 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 no. I believe that your notion of God is a false, incorrect notion of God. That means what you call God is not the God that appears in, in, in our Bible. You see, believing that God is one doesn't mean anything, okay? Because you could believe a turtle is God, right? One turtle, not two. And yes, you would be a monotheist, but you would still be an idolater. In order for us to have the same God, he would have to have commanded the same things. So being that your God... Okay, okay, let's, let's go with the commandments. So, so the God commanded that you don't worship anything but Him. Correct? Correct. The God, God commanded that you follow my commands only, not no, no one else. Correct? Uh, his commands as they appear in the Torah, that, that is the beliefs that we corrupt. Let's, let's just keep it abstract. Uh, then you don't kill anyone. Correct? Uh, we don't, uh, maliciously. Okay. You don't steal. Oh, correct. 
You don't. You be nice to your parents. We have over six hundred and thirteen commandments. Unless you're going to go through every one of those commands, yeah, but you're focused. Well, let's stick. Let's stick with the simple ten commandments, right? We have as many commands in common with the Book of the Dead as we do with with Muslims. No, the Book of Dead is is also the same book of. Where do you think Book of Dead came from? From Egypt. Yeah, and who, who, who do you think Moses was, and Abraham was, and Joseph was? They were all in Egypt. Are you saying that the God of Egypt was the God of Israel? Yeah. All uh, right, I disagree. Can I just jump in? What, what, why is it? So, why is it such a? What do you think Amun is? So in is in in Egypt, well, there was a plethora of gods. There were many different gods. No, no, of course there has, has always been plethora. Yeah. But so who's who, who's Amun? It doesn't really matter. I mean, I just came back from India. I mean, they have a lot more gods there. I'm not going to say they're all. No, the in the in every civilization, people worship all sorts of things. Yeah. So but we're... there's there's always people who always worship one god too. So, for example, like today, you know, I worship the god, the god of that is creator of all of us, and then there are people who worship Satan. No, I understand. That <laughs> Only because you worship one god. It doesn't mean that you worship the same God. Right? Well, excuse me. Do you worship one God, right? I worship one God, not necessarily your so, same. God. There are some people who believe so, that God is an elephant, right? One. No, elephant. All right, all right. Forget them, people. Forget the elephant, yeah. Because you, you know, there's one God, right? Uh, okay. The way I know okay. there's God is because my Bible tells me that the God who gave me the instructions of Mount Sinai that He's one. Okay. Not okay. So, God. so, so, your so which Bible you you you're speaking of? I'm sorry. Which Bible are you speaking of? The Torah. The Torah, right? Yeah. Okay. So the <laughs> so <laughs> the, the the God. No, no. Sorry. The God. that the the God from the Torah. Yeah. yeah. Are you so that's. That for me, same God, there's, there's only one. There's one God. Yeah? Same God from the Torah, yeah? Uh, I don't get your logic. Only because you believe that God is uh, one. Like, I think, no, I'm no, saying, no, well, right. I'm, I'm, I'm saying, this is why I believe I'm in it. I'm not getting your logic is because I think you, your logic I believe, is I believe like in a... one God, yeah? Same same God. From no, the I Torah, think, yeah. I, I think his his logic is a little exclusive. He thinks that his no, but yeah, his, how you're speaking, like you've got a, a Pacific God, like I'm saying, like that's your God and no one else. It, no, come on, brother, come on, brother. What I'm my, saying, my God is the God of 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 anyone who wants to accept his legal code and crown him as God. My religion, yeah, man. which is Torah, Covenant, Judaism, was universal from its inception. That so, means but, any join this religion and become part of the Jewish people. I mean, you too. I mean, you guys who convert to Judaism, by the way, you could drop Islam, right, respectfully, and convert to Judaism. Uh, 100%. No, but let me people. ask you this: Why? Why would? Why would you? First of all, why would you say that uh, the, the you guys broke the covenant? So why are you entitling yourself to that covenant? You don't even have that covenant anymore. Because in the same covenant, it tells us what to do after we break the covenant. No, but you broke it. Yeah, yeah. And you it never said, kept it. Yes, and in the Torah. So it why said, are you keeping? It, why are you making to, yourself uh, entitled as if on. you you are the only you know owners uh, of the covenant? Okay, so the Torah says. So are you saying your ancestors was uh, part of the covenant back in the day, right? Hold on, hold on. Just let me respond to his question. Wow. It says that when you break the covenant, God is going to exile you. And to where wherever he happens to exile you, if you turn back to God, he will he will hear your voice and he will bring you back to your former glory if you return. That's so, that's that's your interpretation. That's what it says. You want me to read it? No, no, no. The, the fact that you that the fact that the people of Israel, and these are not, by the way, you, these are these are mainly black in, in you know in color. Uh, you know, come on. So, so 
if those people <laughs> were the college, you can say you're you're the people. I mean, you you have to go and have a DNA test to prove me it's a, that, no, no, no. No, that you're you're one of those people. You mean you just it just, but the fact that you broke that covenant. Let's say you are one of those people, and, and it's clear that you broke the covenant. Then why are you entitling yourself to this this uh, this exclusive club of people? I mean, you literally broke the covenant. Yeah. I heard you. All right, keep on. Okay, so if you broke the covenant, then what makes you special? You're cursed. Mm-hmm. Hold on, I'm going <laughs> to you right now. Okay. And then you want me to, you want me to leave what I have to follow a hey. curse. It makes you think what people, what people are cursed right now. What people have been cursed for, God, for a century. Out. I have the part of you people. Yep. By the way, I'm, 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 I'm smiling. I'm not. In, to, listen, in listen, today's listen, age, though, okay. what, 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 guys, what people is cursed, though? Gosh. All right, hold on. I have to mute. Okay. Okay. So, Leviticus chapter 26, starting from verse 39. Those of you who are left will waste away in the lands of their enemies because of their sins. Also, because of their ancestors' sins, they will waste away. Now, this is talking about when we break the covenant. But, this is verse 40. If they will confess their sins and the sins of their ancestors, their unfaithfulness and their hostility towards, towards what? Towards me, which made me hostile towards them. So then I sent them into the lands of their enemies. Then when their uncircumcised hearts are humbled and, and they pay for their sin, I will remember my covenant with Jacob and my covenant with Isaac and my covenant with Abraham. And I will remember the land for the land will be deserted by them and will enjoy its Sabbaths while it lies desolate without them. They will pay for their sins because they rejected my laws and abhorred my decrees. Yet in spite of this, when they are in their lands of their enemies, I will not reject them or abhor them so as to destroy them completely, breaking my covenant with them. I am the Lord their God, uh, but for the sake and but for their sake, I will remember the covenant with their ancestors whom I brought out of Egypt in the sight of all the nations their God, uh, uh, to be their God. I am the Lord. Right? Uh, so this is part of the ex be their God, I am the Lord. Right. Uh, so no, no, wait, no. Hold on. This is a part of the X cross. Hey, there, God, I am the Lord. Right. Uh, so no, no, wait, no. Hold on. This is a part of the X cross. Hey, there, God, I am the Lord. Right. All right. I have to mute him because there's an echo there. What we're experiencing now is part of the exilic process. This is not our first exile. Don't forget, there was something called the Babylonian exile, and they also knew this, and they repented in Babylon. And they repented when they rebuilt the temple with Ezra and Nehemiah and God forgave them and reestablished their former glory. If God did it in the past, he's going to do it in the future because we worship a God who doesn't change. So tell me again how because we broke our covenant, this in some way only left Islam as an option for everybody else. Can you hear me? Yes, I could. Yeah. Good. No, listen. You did not break that covenant. Okay, you were not even there. Okay, I mean, this is you're talking about thousands of years ago. All right. I did not break that covenant. But the message of the God remained same. Okay, so whoever follows God and his message, mm -hmm. he's good. Simple as that. You mean the so, Torah? The Torah. Torah is just a law. Right. So his, his, his message continues till nope. the end of the time. Not according to Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Because Judaism says twice. It says in Hebrew, Don't add or take away from these instructions. Christianity says the same thing in the book of Revelation. And the Quran says the same thing. Because they know that the only way to not get replaced is to cap Revelation. Our revelation was capped. Yeah, so the last revelation being Quran is going to be till the end of the world. Yeah, but the Torah says that you're not allowed to add that God's not going to speak to us anymore with further revelation. Who that, said that? It means you literally killed, the, not you, but people of Israel killed the prophets 
it was their common thing. They would kill them. Yeah. All the time. So, so like, I, who 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 died and told them that that so, God's not going to send additional prophets? Okay. So, a prophet in Judaism is someone God sends the children of Israel to bring them back to Torah observance when Israel begins to misbehave. Okay. So you're you keep saying Torah. Torah literally means laws, instructions. Yes. Okay. So let's just use that word. You know, instructions. So God. instructions are general instructions. They can mean they're, they're not a, they're not 3,000 year old instructions. What do you mean? I mean, the Torah was given 3,000 years ago. Okay, but the instructions kept on coming. No, they did not. A well, prophet, it, it prophet, came in the Quran. Okay, because you believe in the Quran. And we. this is why we don't accept the New Testament. And this is why we don't accept the Quran. Because we're not allowed to add or take away from the Torah. Now, when you say add, no, so you, 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 what are, what is Quran adding to the instructions that you don't take? For, for example, where do you have a problem with it? So sure. if Quran says, be good to your parents, do you have a problem with that? If the Quran is just reiterating a Torah principle, I don't have a problem with that. If the Quran. Okay, well, that's, that's exactly what it's doing. Oh, really? So <clears throat> our principle commands me to accept Muhammad as the final prophet and messenger. Yeah. So what's the problem with that? What Torah principle commands me to follow that? Isn't that adding to the Torah? No. So it, the no the the pro, the, pro, the the problem with this logic is that you don't it means this is nothing new. Children of Israel killed many prophets, many prophets. This is the, the, this was some of the things that they used to do. They would kill prophets just because they didn't like him. Uh, not right. not so quick. I mean. Right? I mean, come on. You, you, can't, you can't deny that. I mean, they used no. to kill prophets. No, I'm denying it. Okay. In Deuteronomy chapter 18, God says that when we begin to emulate the nations of the world, God will raise up for us a prophet, i.e. to bring us back to the Torah. Right? Uh, uh, so, yes, prophets are sent to Israel when they're misbehaving to in some way guide them back to God. And they are the suffering servants of God. You know, because but do you agree that historically that children of Israel killed prophets? Yes, not? for sure. But you're okay. saying that's what I'm talking about. And why would they kill prophets? Because they just either they didn't like him, they didn't like the message, or for whatever reason, they just killed them. Okay. Yeah, but it wasn't so there weren't so many exiles, okay, and and there weren't not every prophet was killed. Okay. But I'm, many I'm, were killed. Eh, like probably probably two percent. Okay, the, let's okay, let's so anyway, if, the, if if it, so it's nothing new that if they can kill a prophet, they wouldn't believe in a prophet. So it's nothing new that you would not believe in Muhammad. The job of the it, prophet is not what Muhammad fulfilled. The job of the prophet was only there to bring you back to the Torah, not to give you... What, a, what did Muhammad did not fill? Did he not rule the world? He gave you a new message. That what means, new message? I think we just established that there was nothing new in there. What's new? That... By the simple fact that you believe that if someone doesn't believe that Muhammad is the final messenger and prophet, then God doesn't validate their religiosity or their salvation. That's no. the biggest message. That, that's not true, actually. In Quran, it clearly says if you are if you are if you are believer and if you're a Jew or a Christian or a Sabian, and if you do the right thing and you believe in the day of judgment, if you and if you do good work, then you have nothing to worry about. I think Islam is very inclusive. But you're telling me that Islam says that someone who doesn't I mean, who denies? I can, I can give you the worst them, but oh, it's, in, it's in the chapter number two. It's my, my thing. I'm not saying that Islam doesn't allow them to live with a dimmy status, but does Islam no, no, say. No, 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 no. This got nothing dimmy status. I'm, ta I'm telling you about a Islam verse in Quran. Okay. Are you telling me that someone who denies that Muhammad is the final prophet and messenger will make it into the afterlife or not go to hell? If you, for example, you, okay, yeah. you never met Prophet Muhammad. Sure. You probably even never, let's say, assume that you never met a Muslim. No, I know. But yeah. if, I, if I already knew the message and I refused to accept Muhammad as a prophet and messenger. No. Apart from so, so if you, if now, so if you understood the message, if you read the Quran and mm -hmm. if you met the Muslims and they've actually put proven to you that that is a prophet and then you disbelieve, then, then you are a denier. But uh, I, I would not consider you a denier because I'm, I'm sure you never came. It means you probably don't know Arabic. You probably never read. May I ask that. a question? All right. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, 
what is the difference between Christianity and Judaism? And we still the follow the, the Old Testament and uh, Torah. It's still the same. Well, well let, let me finish my point. Uh, 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 Rabbi, let me just... Going on, on and on and on. I'm not sure what your point is, right? Uh, my point is this, that if you are you're not condemned to hell mm -hmm. just because you do not know Muhammad, you're not. That's not what I said. I didn't say that. I mean, I said, if I refuse to accept Islam, that means I've been presented Muhammad and I was, you know, I know enough about Muhammad nowadays to reject them properly, right? I'm not saying okay. if I lived on some islands for sure. I, I, I don't think you do. I don't think you do because if you did, you would not. I, I, I highly, highly doubt it. Come on. You believe God is merciful. I believe God is merciful. But you said that once a Muslim reaches out to you, tells you, you their rendition of God's plan for this world, which includes Muhammad, and if you don't accept it, then you will not make it. No, no, no. So you're okay. you're saying that just a five minute talk, just ha me and you having this talk, and I'm telling you what that's Believe. not what it is. Okay, every every belief system from Christianity and Judaism acknowledge that if people never heard about Islam or Christianity or Judaism, that God will be merciful and judge him perhaps on his deeds alone. Everyone, any ethical person acknowledges that, but the idea is that. If you heard the message of Islam, okay, and you refuse to accept it, then you will not enter paradise. It's that not heard. It's not heard. You have to read the Quran. All, right. All right. I mean, it's 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 not heard. It's just not casually hearing about Islam and now you're you're you you are you have to do it. No, you have to like you have to truly understand Quran. Right. You have to re really grasp the message, and then you don't buy it. Who's then the that's the problem. Here, regardless, our God told us that we're not allowed to add or take away from the initial message. We don't believe in progressive revelation. The job of the prophet is not there to reveal new things. It says in the Torah that even if a prophet tells you something new, you take him out and you stone him. The job of the prophet is to bring you back to the old revelation. To the but I keep asking you, what's new he added? I just told you, believing in Muhammad as the no, final... No, no. That that's look, that's, looking, that's a that's a standard thing for for prophets. Like you have to follow the prophets. Okay, okay? fine. There's five pillars of Islam, correct? Yes. Is making the Hajj something that's new that doesn't appear in our Torah? Pilgrimage? Yes. There's many things that appear in the Quran that don't appear in the Torah. I mean, don't even start. Okay, okay, let me let me ask you this. That's that's something that Abraham did. Do you follow Abraham or no? I do follow Abraham only because okay. it tells me that Abraham behaved in a certain way. Doesn't mean that I, as a Jewish person, have to believe what the Quran says. I mean, you do so you so you don't. But so that's 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 the practice of Abraham. That's that's the Abrahamic practice. Only, so you don't but, wanna... I mean, you do acknowledge that Jews don't believe in the Quran. So only to a Muslim, the definition of a fanatic is someone who begins to judge people outside of his religion by the theological tenets of his religion. Okay, I, I belong to a different religion. We could only communicate. Yeah. No, no, I, I think we are talking about instructions here. So let's say, okay, we, we agree on one thing, that that Hajj is a Abrahamic tradition, and apparently you're not finding that to be okay. That's fine. Let's wait, wait, find wait. something else. What else is different? Not according to our Bible, perhaps. Okay, then, I, I agree. Okay, let's let's go to the next one. What what else is different? No, no, no. You have to... You just can't keep moving the goalpost. Do you acknowledge that Jews don't have any knowledge of Muhammad or Abraham making some sort of pilgrimage? pilgrimage to Mecca or Medina, correct? That Jews don't have this knowledge, correct? Um, the Maybe today's Jews, but uh, the ones who lived in the Arabia no. knew. You have to be intellectually honest when you're going to enter no, into... No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm intellectually honest. I'm telling you... I'm not in some way trying to bring so down... You, uh, I, do you acknowledge that Abraham had a son whose name is Ismail? Yes, I do. Okay. So do you know where Ismail was? What do you mean? Like geographically, where was he established? So the Torah doesn't tell us what happened to Ishmael. Okay, so just because you don't know that, that historically he was established in Mecca, okay, and in Arabia, so and this is so what he, the Quran states and Islamic that, tradition. That's right? this is the even pre-Islamic. This has this is pre-Islamic. Kaaba know, was Kaaba was there before before that, Islam. that Islam had anything to do. With Ishmael was a tradition, right? And that Muhammad believed that the tribe of Quraysh was in some way connected to... 
to Ishmael. There's nowhere in the Torah that tells us that Ishmael became Islam or became or, or became Saudi Arabia. I mean, the word Arab comes from the word Arab. It means mixture because you're a mixture of different people. Jews are a mixture of different people also. I mean, it's not a big deal. But the idea that Ishmael in some way represents you in the Bible is... So, is, so, so it is clear that because you don't understand the, the, the side but, of the Abraham who comes from Ishmael, you and believe, you don't understand... No, no, I'm being honest with you. Because you don't understand that Abraham this, established no, no. The, the Kaaba, you have a problem with not accepting that side of the... I can't. I can't. I mean, I have to kick him out. I mean, he's not picking up this logic here. And he keeps on saying that I have a problem. <laughs> it's in his book. Why would I have the problem? I belong to a different religion. I don't I don't canonize his book. I don't elevate his book. What's 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 it's like me quoting Rashi or quoting the Rambam and telling them, oh, you don't believe in Rashi. You don't believe in the Rambam, but it's true whether you believe in it or not. You know how stupid I would sound, you know, but suddenly we're supposed to let Muslims get away with that. It, it just sounds so primitive because they're used to talking to people who, who who would come otherwise, which are not the people, specifically the people you want in your religion. Okay. Anyways, go continue, guys. Okay, so I had asked a question. Uh, what, okay, what, uh, if, what is the difference? You asked. Okay. All right. So Jews believe in the Jewish Bible and Christians believe in the New Testament, which introduces a character that didn't literally appear in the Jewish Bible. His name was Jesus. And they believe that this, Christians believe that this individual is God incarnate and died for the sins of all humanity. Jews do not believe this because it doesn't appear in our Bible. We weren't even awaiting that. Um, so Jews feel that the way we're made right with God is by keeping his commandments. Um, actually, believing in God is one of those commandments. Uh, Christians believe that the way you're made right with God is by accepting a human sacrifice done in your behalf. This is essentially the difference between Judaism and Christianity. And does it mean we are the same as uh, Christians and Judaism? I'm sorry. Can, can you we, do we do do we serve the same God? It depends. It depends. Our God commanded us to listen to the Torah. That the Torah was to be kept for all generations. If you are a Christian who believes that the Torah is done away with, we cannot worship the same God. Right? I mean, because the word worship in Hebrew is the word avodah. So the word avodah means to serve. The way we serve the God of Israel is by keeping his commandments. If your relationship with God is not of one who keeps commandments, then you're serving a different God, not the God of Israel. Because our God, the only way you worship the God of Israel is by keeping his commandments. So this is... Yeah, uh, assalamu alaikum. Can you tell us what do you mean yeah, by you. Israel? Israel is a state, tribe, or uh, Israel is a straight path or something else? What, so what is Israel by uh, definition to you? Yeah. So when I say Israel, I mean the children of Israel. I'm not talking about the state of Israel. Okay. So it's not So it's not really connected to the... To what? So it's not really connected with the issue of religion. Oh, uh, no. It's, it's not connected to the religion. No, for sure. I mean, I'm asking you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so be an ethnic. I just. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, I just want to say that uh, we Muslims do believe in every prophet, and we don't really have problem with prophet Abraham. I mean, Ibrahim, the prophet uh, Yaqub, Jacob, prophet Yusuf, Joseph, and uh, every pretty much any prophet. I mean, we believe in all books. And wait, wait. I don't really see, uh, well, as I was really investigating religions, I mean, I am a Muslim, hold on, hold on. but uh, uh, I understood that pretty much You're Jews have a lot, a lot of in common with Muslims hold than on. Christians. Hold on. Christians are more closely to pagans. I get it. Hold on, but just let me respond. I mean, just so we can have a yeah. nice... Yeah, uh, I'm just saying this. I'm just saying this, that Jews uh, have a lot of in common with Muslims. Okay, so... I hear that you believe in the same prophets we do, and you also believe in Jesus. However, you only believe in them through Islamic lenses. There are many statements in the New Testament that you would consider straight shirk, right? So it's it's clearly not the same prophets. There's, there's statements in our Torah but that you would consider corrupted. So the individuals you essentially believe in are an Islamic form of Moses, an Islamic form of Jesus, an Islamic form of Jeremiah or David, 
it's not the same individual because if it was the same individual, then we could share the same Bible. So I think it's a I little. Don't really, I don't really think like that. I think that the people had different rules and regulations in different times. So if, for example, Adam, Adam Prophet uh, had regulation that his children could have sex and have children, today those laws would change. Not, be, not that God changed the name, just the regulations change as the people changed. Pretty much location, maybe their ego, maybe how they, they wanted to worship. Maybe sometimes they ask, I mean, maybe in some form of past, they ask God, maybe... Uh, can you give us God the day where where should we worship like Sunday or Saturday? So God later changed it. It's not that oh. it's not those types of law. Well, I mean, me th there is types of laws that can change, oh, no, but the on. basic law of believing in one God never change. Okay, hold on. All right. So we don't believe that uh, God keeps on giving us more revelation. Uh, it happened we don't before. Believe that too. Wait, hold on. It happened before the Torah was given. But after the Torah was revealed to humanity, God specifically said, don't add or take away to my instructions. That's it. And he says it twice in the Torah. That means yeah. that from then on, there is no more to be learned from God. He's given us yeah. the tools, and it's, it's, it's up to us to perfect this world with those tools, and that includes fighting evil. I understand. Uh, it, it, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. I mean, I understand that Christians and Muslims have to in some way do away with what came before in order to solidify their existence. I get that. Because if Judaism had it all, why would you need Christianity? Why would you need Islam? So Islam and, 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 and Christianity, they have to find fault in Judaism. But I'm here to prove that any ethical notion that you think Islam or Christianity brought to the table existed already in Judaism. You know, so everyone listen to... Everyone listening to me could become Jewish if they wanted to. I mean, don't feel that Jew, that being part of Israel or being part of the covenant is only uh, like for those who have some blood connection to Abraham. It's not true. Anyone could become part of Israel. Now continue. Continue, continue. Uh, I, uh, I came on here to learn a little bit about... Um, Judaism, to be honest. Okay. Um, yeah. So I have a bit of a background about, um, you know, the three different religions being mm. Christianity, Islam, and, and Judaism. Um, what, what is the, like, I, when we're talking about the history going back in, um, in the time of Judaism uh, in Israel, what are the core beliefs that are taught in in the Tanakh and all of these things that makes this religion different from mm. the other ones? I think that's what, what's so special is that I think the Torah views having too much faith as a bad thing because it could get you to justify incorrect ideas. Mm -hmm. right? and if something seems illogical, just have faith and just your faith is just not strong enough. Right. And if if it seems illogical, that's a Christian will tell you that's the devil lying to you. Right. And he's whispering here and don't listen to him. Right. Um, the Torah just wants you to behave in a certain manner. The truth is you won't want to keep Torah if you didn't believe that they were the words of God. All right. Uh, so faith mm -hmm. is a component, but it requires very little faith and it requires a lot of action. Mm -hmm. Why? Because faith only helps you. Action, proper behavior benefits the whole world. Okay, I don't really care what someone claims to believe. I care about how that person behaves. Mm. And it seems that that's the trend we see in the Torah as well. The Torah, our Bible, doesn't mention heaven. It doesn't mention hell. I'm not saying these places don't exist. I'm just saying that it seems that God doesn't want it us. He didn't want us to be so preoccupied with these notions, right? To in some way focus on some afterlife instead of perfecting the world that we're in nowadays right i mean look at islam i mean people are so passionate about entering the next life that they're in some way willing to martyr to themselves in this life this is unhealthy behavior from a torah perspective See, agreed yeah See. I, I i have one thing to 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 counter um the idea that um all you need is faith is typical to evangelical Christianity in America. 
historically, Christianity has not been only faith and not deed. It has been a coupling of the both. <clears throat> it's so it's, it's repeated by, G, by James, the brother of Jesus, that says, and he's repeating what Jesus says. Yeah. Um, those who do not love me, those who say they love me but do not follow my commandments do not love me. James and, chapter verse 5. Yeah, James says, for faith without works yeah. is dead. And in the, it works without faith is dead, coupling again the words of Jesus, that there are many who will come to me saying, did I not do all these things? And X, Y, Z. So, <clears throat> like, orthodoxy, you require the two, faith and work, belief and reason. Um, it's, it's in the advent of American evangelicalism that you see a waning in leaning towards reason and this emergence of blind faith sustaining all. Yeah. No, I agree. I, I teach that Christianity and ethical Islam are net gains, ethical net gains on this planet. However, um, I've always said that it's hard to be ethical without a law code in front of you of what you're allowed to do and what you're not allowed to do. So even Orthodox Christians who believe in works um, have no issue eating pork, have no issue mixing wool and linen. So they don't have a set code of what's allowed and what's not allowed. They just kind of like feel like, you know, I have to try to do something that seems ethical. So it affects how consistently ethical they are. I think it benefits Christians to be Torah observant, possibly even convert to Judaism, because they would have the laws right in front of them of what God expects from them. Mm. So then the laws that are followed, uh, like these ethical laws, let's say, that are followed in Judaism, is does that come, what, does that come from Abraham's laws? Or what laws do you follow? I don't know. There's some laws that are recycled from Abraham, like circumcision, let's say. But the ethical law code is what we received on Mount Sinai. I think it's Exodus chapter 20 to the end of Deuteronomy. It was a transmission um, where God was speaking through Moses of his Moses, yeah. 613 uh, plus commandments. Yeah. Positive and negative. Correct. Well, positive in the sense that, I mean, for those who don't know, I'm sure you know, uh, they're, they're commands to tell you to do something and negative commandments are commandments to tell you not to do something. Yeah. Right. And so what are like, are those the ones that are like, do not, do not steal, do not commit at all. Uh... Every law, you know, from not eating pork, you know, to celebrating the Sabbath to, 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 uh, um, I don't know, right. I mean, celebrating Yom Kippur. Right. Did, so did the, did the Chris, uh, like the Bible, uh, the Christian Bible, did they, uh, take or add from those basic principles? I, I would I would say no. I would say that Jesus, um, in his presentation of the ethic given in Exodus and Deuteronomy, solidified those things to two points. He says that all of the law and the commandments are found... Sorry, I'm, I'm in the hospital. Um, all the law and the commandments are found in these two things, to love your neighbor and love God. So to love God with all your being and love your neighbor as you love yourself, this is in fulfillment of the commandments. This, this fulfills all 613, positive and negative. If right. you truly love your neighbor as yourself, you're not going to stone them for practicing witchcraft. You're going to entice them to leave that um, and, and go another way, in a way of loving them as, a, as opposed to killing them, which is in the 613. Um, well, according to that, then I guess it's okay to eat a pork sandwich or to not rest on the Sabbath. Or, uh, I mean, it's just because the God in the Bible didn't make a distinction between commandments. The same God who said, don't eat rabbit, is the same God who says, don't steal. So, I mean, what laws, I mean, heck, is a Christian allowed to be homosexual? I mean, Jesus never prohibited it. Well, and neither did the, the, the Torah. Um... Well, the act of homosexuality is prohibited. Well, the act of forceful penetration is prohibited. That's, it doesn't say forceful. No, it says, in the Talmud, it, Talmud it, it, it explains that the act, the act of homosexuality it would be conceived, like perceived as this particular thing. Um, and so... That, that itself is, is a form of, you know, R-A-P-E. 
Uh, but the Torah is clear that man, a man shouldn't lie with a man as he does with a woman. And the Talmud goes even further. I mean, the Talmud prohibits lesbianism, but the Torah doesn't prohibit. But I never, I've, I've never, I've been teaching Judaism for over, over almost 20 years, and that it only prohibits men or gay sex that's not consensual, <laughs> you know. I mean, the other thing is, is the, the law of witnesses. So you need two or three witnesses to witness to this particular act oh, to make on. it against the law as well. I mean, there's... No, 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 no. Hold, wait, hold on. Hold on. Well, yes, even, According even, in, to... even in, when Jesus, with the woman caught in adultery, right? We'll, we'll look at the messianic teachings. Um, and we see this woman caught in adultery brought by men before Jesus. And like knowing Jewish law, this woman would have had to have been caught in adultery, meaning these men would have been, had to have been present in the act of adultery. Okay. They would have had to have borne witness. These two or three witnesses would have had to have borne witness the bond to the act. Yourself. Hold on, hold on. You're saying that according to the Torah, if there aren't two witnesses, it's not a sin? It's that one, it's one of those gray areas. Okay, so why would God call it an abomination then? I mean, in the same way he called, like, it's this weird passage in the middle of a bunch of other things that no, isn't necessarily, like, connected to the statement either. So, I guess, unaliving someone, if you don't get caught, it's kind of gray area? Well, I mean, the, the word used for thou shalt, what we've translated to thou shalt not kill, is thou shalt not murder. Because no, if it was thou shalt not kill, we'd all be pacifists and vegetarians. Yeah, but that's a different point. You're saying that if you don't get caught in the act, then it's not an actual sin. I mean, you know, there has to, like, that's the, that's the rule. That's not the rule. I just that's told you that. the rule. Oh, things, there must be witnesses. To bring it before a judge, there must be witnesses. A judge? We're talking about God. What does God think? For sure, I agree with you. In order to be unalived by the court, there has to be witnesses. But to say that God tolerates it as long as you don't get caught, when God calls it a toeva, he calls it an abomination, I mean, then God is not ethical. I mean, he's just, uh, well, just don't get caught. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. I mean, that would be the plain interpretation of the text. Don't get caught. That's not the plain interpretation of the text. I mean, God is a God who wants you to act righteously, not not just get caught. You see, well, to be righteous. All right, so, so let me ask you this, right? Yeah. If an individual, if all they have is their 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 leaning their their actions upon homosexuality and everything else, right? That's in private, and everything in every other way, they are considered siddiq. They are a righteous person, mm -hmm. right? right? And there are no witnesses to their actions in private. Are they like? Is the community no longer going to find them righteous? The community. Because they don't know, I mean, that whether the person God is wouldn't find them the righteous. The community doesn't know. But again, we can't say uh, that with assurance, because uh, even even the old even even the Tanakh is a progressive revelation. No, it's just not. I mean, not from a. Not, we don't believe in progressive revelation. The prophets are not there to give us a progression in our revelation. They're there to bring us back to the initial revelation. If a prophet adds anything new, we take him out and we stone him. This is why. That we don't believe in Muhammad as a as as a progression at Revelation or Joseph Smith, or like or the writers of the New Testament because we don't believe in progressive Revelation. You sound like a Jewish person who happens to be on the left. I'm I'm I am uh, ethnically yes, religiously not. But you are on the left, correct? Um, no, I'm neither left nor right. Okay, well, so that means you're on the left. Someone on the right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, well, if we want to get into the political spectrum, the right has gone further and further. So anyone left of where the right is now would be considered left. But like, even when You're I was, <laughs> even when I no, even when I was, I was a card carrying Republican working on the reelection campaign campaign of George Bush, who was a centrist for the most yeah. part. Like in 2023, now that would be considered left, and that's not necessarily <laughs> true. Left. I mean, it perhaps may have been considered liberal, but there's a distinction between the left and liberals. Yeah, I, I would lean more towards liberalism, yes. Okay. But the, the, the totality of, of academia even agrees that 
the text leans towards progressive revelation. Okay, so well, these academics aren't Orthodox Jews. They're typically not even religious. With well, the average doctor of divinity doesn't even believe in God. So all they know about the Bible is that it's made up of a portion called the New Testament and 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 Tanakh or whatever they would call the Old Testament. That's not how Jews do mm, it. They call it like in academia, it's the Masoretic text and the Messianic writings. Yeah, um, colloquially, it's understood as a Jewish Bible. But mm -hmm. from a Torah perspective, only the revelation where you see the Mount Sinai is the word of God. God told us to accept prophets when we misbehave to bring us back to the initial revelation, not to give us further revelation. The, well, the text doesn't the text doesn't lean to itself as the the dictated word of God itself. So the laws, the instructions, thus says the Lord, all these things came from Mount Sinai through Moses. That does appear as the word of God. Heck, even the first two commandments are big. There are many commandments that came from God directly. It's true. Maybe, well, but even even Jewish scholarship will will admit that Moshe may, most likely was not a realistic character. Uh, not religious Jews. I mean, probably left leaning Jews. Well, Moses was I mean, definitely real. Like, uh, Moshe would be considered a epic. I'm not character. making the claim that Moses is real because I don't expect right. you to hold to what Orthodox Jews believe. But the average Orthodox, the, where do you where do you think where do you think I learned it from? From Orthodox Jews, I, I learned it as as someone who was a Chabadnik before I converted. You're telling me the Chabadniks don't believe that Moses existed? There are Chabadniks that believe that the Rebbe is the Moshiach. So For yes, sure. you believe and, that? Uh, you're going to believe Moses existed. But there are some, and as well in 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 Orthodoxy, there are academics who get to the point where they admit that Moshe is a legendary character. They're all legendary characters. We believe it in faith, absolutely. But to say that we... Oh, well, but that countermands your previous statement. That? That faith is not the thing that sustains. So if you believe, if, if your faith demands you believe that Moshe was real, then you are centering yourself on your faith. My faith doesn't demand me to believe that Moses was real or even Mount Sinai was real. My faith demands me to believe that a good God gave us instructions to keep. Whether those instructions... Whether they fell down in book form, whether we found them underground, what makes and breaks my religion is if these instructions make the world a better place or not. That's it. In terms of the narrative, we're not commanded to believe the narrative in the Torah. I mean, nowhere in the Torah does it say that the narrative was given to us on Mount Sinai. So it's not a tenet of our faith to believe every word that appears there as, as, as in terms of narrative, in terms of, you know, who this person married or who this person unalived. This is all, like you said, legend. Okay. All right, next. So, Go ahead. Yeah, so how do you, how do you use the ethical, like, to figure out if it's ethical or not? Like, when you're looking at the teachings from the Tanakh that you, is it the Tanakh that you base the, where Moses' um, commandments are? Um, how do you, do you believe, like, what's your thought on current modern ethics and how that, uh, how that fits in with the, like, it seems like you believe in, like, an absolute morality to some extent? So I believe everyone alive in the U.S. today, or at least in the West, needs to pay tribute to where our ethics ultimately came from. Now, clearly, the average person doesn't walk around quoting the book of Deuteronomy uh before he or she makes some sort of ethical decision but by the simple fact that we believe that it's this book where our, the vast majority of our ethics came from that it's this book in particular that has civilized the world more than any other book i'm not saying it's the only book but it's pro for sure it's the most influential in the west that itself categorizes myself as an ethical monotheist that's it you know i mean it's not that i walk around with the bible in some way as as a guide on how to make decisions our whole society is built off of biblical ethics right and it, all you have to do is pay tribute to that and that's what separates you from an irreligious nihilistic individual okay and when you say nihilistic what do you mean by that that there's no purpose in anything everything is is like right. somewhat okay yeah like i've 
my my beliefs are I'm I'm all over the place. I'm more modern, I guess, in my beliefs. I would say I have gone. I was raised. Uh, I, I grew up in the Catholic faith. That's just how I was brought into this world, right? Um, I've read the basically the the Old Testament, and I've read part of the New Testament in the King. What is it, King? Edward King uh, King James version mm -hmm. and I've learned about the different religions Muslim and, and and that I'm I think how I see how I see things is I I see that there are infinite possible possibilities that's how I see uh, so when I hear people and talk about their uh, what they what they believe to be true um, I think that there's um, importance to that. Um, so that's why I, I like to learn. I think learning is staying no, open. I, I like, I love ethical Christians and I love ethical Muslims. And I wish that every atheist out there, if he's not going to become Jewish or a, a Torah keeping Jew, should embrace one of these two belief systems. However, I don't care about narrative. Um, I care about ethics. And it seems that both Christianity and Islam, I'm not trying to mention every religion out there. I'm talking about the three major monotheistic religions. All they brought is met metaphysics and narrative. Hmm. While it is the Torah that brought the ethics that are appropriated in both Christianity and Islam, which is fine. I mean, they did a lot more with our ethical code than we did, unfortunately. Um, but it, I, I'm not going to deny uh, that everything that Christianity and and Islam brought to the table ethically already existed in Judaism. So mm -hmm. if someone's a true searcher, uh, I think it would behoove them to start with Judaism before they hopped into Islam and Christianity. But I could guarantee you that if you would start with Judaism, you would remain in Judaism. I mean, if you were going to join any of the three belief systems, because right. the Torah says don't add or take away from it. So that would automatically classify these later movements that claim to be an extension of the initial movements as false. Right. But. Yeah. Like I could, I would, I think we share a commonality in that extent is in that sense is that I only care about what is ethical really at the end of the day. That's all I, that's all I, for me, that's what my intuitions tell me is that's what, uh, and you know, truth and what, whatever that means. That's a very, uh, big term to, or not a big term, but that's a very, uh, I don't use dynamic term. term. What's that? I don't use the term truth on this show because that's something, and that's more like an Islamic argument. But it's true. But the Quran says it. But I mean, it's like me quoting the Rambam to someone who doesn't know anything about Judaism. It's like, why would it make it any more true if I quote something? We have yeah. to speak language. I think ethics is that language. Yes, I would agree 100 percent. So like, yeah, so I like I guess the first question I would ask is just like, is it eth like um, unaliving somebody? Why is it what, what, what are the ethics of that? Like, why? What's. Like, because there's morality is uh, how I see morality, the way I see it. And you would probably, this is where we might have a disagreement is that um, you, I think you tend to maybe have more rigid and tell me if I'm wrong, more rules in regards to what we specifically need to follow based from the text of, uh, of uh, like these stringent i want to say rules but you can tell me if i'm wrong and, and what we like that guide your ethics where i'm not necessarily opposed to it but i would like to know the reasoning behind it from a, a pragmatic perspective because i'm more about what well what is how do we uh, like what are we trying to achieve what is our purpose what is our goal what are we trying to achieve with our ethics in society right you know same here i'm mm -hmm. i like the fact that judaism limits its rules and regulations to the land of Israel. Uh, Jews have no jurisdiction to in some way impose ceremonial law in exile. So in terms of, of logic and universal ethics, yes, we have to try to improve and build our neighbors up ethically. Um, but do I feel that people who violate the Sabbath in, in America, they should in some way be, be harmed? <laughs> no. Um, I, I, this is why throughout Jewish history, the vast majority of Jews actually lived outside of the land of Israel because they weren't strong enough to live within a 
a system that that put adulterers to to death or or uh, unalive people for breaking the Sabbath. That's it, you know. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the Torah allows for that. I mean, mm-hmm. not that it's a good thing necessarily. I mean, Jews are still expected to keep the Sabbath in exile, but there is no punishment for it, earthly punishment if they don't. So that's the distinction. The average Jew doesn't walk around judging Gentiles by the ceremonial standards of his or her religion. Right. I guess what can we judge people by? Because I guess what... <laughs> ethics. Ethics doesn't include uh, monotheism or or consensual homosexuality. But these aren't ethical precepts. These are holy precepts. That means they're ceremonial. God mentioned these things. But someone could be ethical and believe that God has two heads and you know three partners, right? Yeah. It, it's, yeah. it's not an ethical thing. It's a ceremonial precept. Right. Yes. I believe that not being a monotheist is wrong if you're claiming to be a worshiper of God. But that's as a religious person. Okay, that doesn't make you any more ethical. However, if you feel it's okay to steal from people, then that makes you wrong, no matter what religion you happen to be in. Right. So it would be would you say that the main focus is on people's actions or is it related to like their intent, their actions? Only actions, no intent. No intent. Okay. So if I, okay, that's an interest. It's like, I see, I think intent might have some impact on a person's, like, oh, I guess. Per- like, yes. On a person, on that person's psyche. Yes. But in the re- in the way that an outsider should relate to it, I don't think people care why you do what's right. They just care that you do right in their vicinity. That's it. Right. I guess too, the consequence of, of people's actions is, is, is another thing to consider or, or is it, you know, cause it's from an ethical perspective. Cause it's like, how is it affecting people around you and you as well? Or what's your take on that? Nobody ever did wrong for the sake of doing wrong. Everyone from Trotsky to Stalin to, I don't know, like Mao Zedong, they all thought they were doing the right thing. Mm-hmm. They left a trail of blood and carnage, <laughs> I mean, for the sake of trying to progress humanity. So it's essentially the, a war between good ideas versus bad ideas. So this is why I don't care if, if you think you're doing something good because everybody thinks you're doing something good. It's ultimately what works. And this is why keeping a record, uh, a track record of what works and doesn't work is the most important thing you could do. We're not so burdened with that as Jews because we have that already. It's called the Torah. But I would question someone's long-term ethics who in some way reinvents the wheel ethically, depending on what their heart tells them. So this is why, from this perspective, I even encourage atheistical individuals to raise children with religion just for the sake of decency, because studies tell us that children or people in general who submit to some ethical standard end up doing more good on this planet than people who don't. Right. Yeah, like, I think think if we're putting in, like laws into into action into society and having people adhere to those laws like we have to like do you believe that that should come from what we know from the torah or do you think that that should be a collaborative approach that takes everyone's beliefs and stuff into consideration right because everyone's going to be different i really the latter I mean, I really wish that men could come together and get their act together, Uh, but they can't. They've tried and we shouldn't try to to keep on trying the same actions and expecting different results. We saw it with the Soviet Union. We saw it with many different societies that threw the Bible away, thinking that they were in some way going to create a more ethical, a more, you know, socially developed society. And they just, you know, they they only left horror. Uh, so I, I just on the biblical track record alone, and I'm not saying the Bible is perfect. I may personally believe that, you know, but that's in faith. I think the choice is typically in life, not between what's perfect and what's horrific, but between what's good and what's better. Just on that basis alone, that's enough for me to encourage people to become Jewish and live according to the Torah, because I know it'll make them more benevolent. It'll get them to volunteer more time to to help someone who's 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 in need while someone who decides on a daily basis what's right and wrong or whether the life of the unborn uh, uh, a child is worth more than a pimple 
right? It, it's it, it, right. You know I, mean? I care about people doing good on this planet, not people, you know, and just taking credit for. I don't know what well, creating their right. own ethical. Yeah. Yeah, it's an interesting. You know, you brought up you brought up the the whole abortion topic, and that's a that's a heated discussion about um, you know what is ethical. It is like is there um, is there rights? Are are rights or like what do you believe in rights or or more about duty per se? I believe in free will, in terms of okay. things that are ceremonial. I'm okay. I don't want to make this about abortion, but I don't think that children on their own necessarily have any rights. Um, I think that parents should raise their kids in the way that that they should go, like it says in the book of Proverbs, and when they're old, they won't depart from it. I mean, does that mean that people are allowed to physically harm? Uh, harm? No. I mean, so everything's a matter of degree. Uh, yeah. But I don't want to make it about abortion. No, I get like what that. you're saying. I think that there's two ways to look at this, though, right? Because when you're talking about rights... Um, you know, you can look at it from the legal framework, right? From a legal perspective and the fact that what's written in law is, um, would be considered and, and people are abiding by that rules would be, they would have those rights. Whereas you can also look at it from a philosophical perspective of like, you know, does this person have a right because they're a human being or, and, and what else, or what is all that? And that's where that whole, a, you know, a right to life and all these things. And we don't have to talk about that, but I think that that is, um, people get confused. I think when we're, when we're having these discussions about, um, ethics, but also from a prag pragmatic perspective. Right. So let's move, let me move on to someone else. I mean, just cause this talk is kind of advanced for the average person. And I think I'm losing 80% audience sure man just, uh, go, and but thanks for thanks for having me and i gave you a follow we'll have a hopefully have another chat again some other time okay thank you very much all right be well so welcome bimbo baggins and uh nayam nayam thanks for having me man i just wanted to i i, I had a quick question um it's just an honor to talk to a rabbi i've always wanted to I've never had the privilege to talk to an actual rabbi and ask him like ask him this question. Um, so I'm a Christian, right? And I just wanted to know, um, like we believe that Jesus was the Messiah, uh, the Mashiach, uh, the, I guess that the Jewish people have been waiting for. But why? Why? Uh, what is the uh, reason? I guess that Jewish people didn't accept Jesus as the Messiah. Okay. Thanks for so, hold on, I'm gonna mute. Or you didn't and don't still, I guess. Uh, you know, that's kind of what I'm curious about. I don't think the average person knew Jesus even existed when he was alive or even a hundred years after he died. Um, why don't they accept Jesus today? Mainly, mainly because they have a problem accepting the idea that God would become a man. They view okay, that okay. as as intolerable as 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 monotheist. I'm not saying I completely agree with what they're understanding. I'm just telling you this is why I they don't. Uh, and is there a thing in the Torah that would that confirms that that like okay so God can never be a man kind of thing? The truth is, I don't think so. I don't think so. Okay. I don't believe in Jesus. I don't believe God, you know, would become a man uh, necessarily. But to be honest, anyone who reads the Bible straight through does does. I mean, you're going to run into portions where God did appear to people in human form. I mean, this is undeniable. So. When the rabbi saw these portions, they said, well, this must have occurred in some sort of vision, in a dream, because God couldn't limit himself in such a manner. But that okay. itself is just opinion. So uh, as a literalist, and I believe in the oral law as well, but when I read the Torah, I read it as it says. I don't see a specific commandment that, that states that if God didn't want to embody a man for 33 years, that he couldn't. That's it. Okay, okay. All right, cool. That that's cool. Thank you. No problem. So that being said, I don't believe in Jesus. Okay, but I'm I'm trying to be painfully honest here. Um, this is why I I uh, I'm able to acknowledge that Christians do a lot of good on this planet, and um, you know, if a Christian will just in some way become Torah observant, then we have what to talk about. Okay, but till then, it's essentially a different religion. 
Awesome. Thank you, man. I'll let somebody else come on again. I'll just, uh, I'll be in the background. No problem. All right. Uh, Nayam, Nayam, you have something to say? Or Niam, Niam? Going once, going twice. Guys, I need for you to all do me a big favor. Hit the like button. Like, 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 right? I mean, like a Nintendo controller, you know? Blah, 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 blah. And uh, the more you hit it, the more viewers you can get. And hopefully, you can finally get someone to put me in my place. Yeah, like it, like it, like it. Let's see. Okay. I'm going to read some of these. Oh, okay. We got two people here. Oh, uh, oh, this person made a video about me. That's one. Hi, welcome. Hi. I saw your video, by the way. I mean, I think it was yours, right? Yeah. I yeah. got a question. All right, go ahead. So, when God spoke to Moses, mm -hmm. And he saw the face of God. Is that correct? It says that he spoke to him face to face. So he. I mean, yeah. He would have had to take on a human, some kind of human semblance for Moses to know who he was. Is that. No, no, not necessarily. I mean, if I show you, like, uh, I don't know, the face of, of anything, it, I mean, it doesn't mean that you have a face. Uh, I mean, it doesn't say it, it doesn't. I mean, I'm just saying it doesn't literally mean that because he spoke to him, you know, like face to face, that he had two eyeballs and the nostrils. Although God it, it, it says in terms of uh, his anger, like he smells and I, whatever. There's a lot of anthropomorphic notions in the Torah, which is, I mean, it makes it a lot more open-minded to people's rendition of what God is and what God isn't, but it's still opinion. Okay. Yeah. And another question to go along with that is, I, knew, I know Judaism doesn't believe in predestination. So when they were at Mount Sinai and Moses went up on the mountain, if anybody else walking by the would they not have known that that was holy ground or was it just what do you mean by like how, um, that our lives are preordained to follow a certain path uh, okay so I would say that the average Jew does believe that I'm not saying I believe that but to be honest there's a lot of people who say weird things on TikTok and they're just not knowledgeable in Judaism. They'll say, well, you know, Jews don't believe in hell and Jews don't believe in Satan. These guys don't know anything about Judaism. I'm not saying I believe in I think the Torah teaches those things, but Judaism does believe in, even in the Christian notion of Satan. Because people think like, Jews believe only in what appears in the book of Job. It's not true. People like this have never read the Talmud. Okay. Um, yeah, so... Um, Jews, the average Jew believes in predestination, unfortunately. They believe that, first of all, all souls were created from the beginning, and Jews, like Jewish souls, only get recycled. And every Jew is, is basically, you know, saved because they're Jewish. Yeah. Um, this well, is... I don't understand that because where do, if you're predestined, where does free choice come in again they they're not very logical in this area you know so they will in some way explain it in a different way they'll be like yeah you have full free choice but that's because um god's not limited to space or time so you made this choice at at some period i don't believe god knows the future by the way i mean the opinion of rabbi gershman levy the 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 robot gershanis whatever you want to call them the rambam also held like partially like this that god didn't know the future mainly because it violates your free will. But I'm just telling you what most Jews believe. Most Jews believe in in, in, in one saved, though we saved, uh, like, in the sense of being Jewish. Um, yeah, the problem is most counter-missionaries give an incorrect rendition of what Jews believe. 
because they want to hurt Christians and win their debates. And I'm talking about a particular Tobias Singer. And um, I'm sure he's a nice guy. I met him a few times when I was living in Israel. Uh, but he, he, there's many Jews who are countries who will present Judaism from a Karite perspective just to defeat a Christian. When pretty much almost everything a Christian believes, it's found somewhere in, in either rabbinic or, or, or Kabbalistic literature. Okay. I mean, from God having parts, you know, to Satan actually fighting against God with the notion of demons, you know, shade them and a deep book and, and Samael, the, the, the king of the demons. The problem is the average Jew doesn't know much about how his or her religion actually functions. And I don't, I don't play those games. I mean, I encourage people to be Jewish, but I don't whitewash the religion. So we have Bibi Netanyahu. Welcome, Bibi. Hey, 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 how are you doing? Hey, what's up? So, what's the topic about today? Um, uh, well, it's always the same. I mean, it's a tactic. It's, uh, I don't know, some people call it a, a trap, thirst trap, whatever. Judaism is better, and you can become Jewish. Now, Judaism is better, yeah, that's my right. right? I mean, you can yeah. become and for people that say Christians, we're trying to do traps for Christians. No, we're not. Because like what, like once a rabbi said, Christians are just medicines to the Jews. You know, we love Christians. We don't we don't come in harm or nothing. So anyone writing that in the comments, you're pretty wrong. Wait, say it again? What, that Jews love Christians? Yeah, we love Christians. <clears throat> so I, I love Christians, but the average yeah. Jew hates Christians. I mean, I'm telling you right now. I'm just yeah, because they're because they're idol worshippers, you know. They're they're right. They're not the average seven, no high law, you know. They're they you can't worship right. idols. Yeah. So this idea that that at least religious Jews like Christians, I like Christians. I mean, I'm not Christian, but I uh, it's, Hasidic it's, Jews that don't. What? I said I know a lot of Hasidic Jews that don't. Don't what? They don't like Christians because they're very you know religious. You know? No Orthodox Jew. It's rare. Like, if you're an Orthodox Jew who says you like Christians, uh, are you Hasidic? Huh? Are you Hasidic? No. You're not Hasidic. No. So what are you? A modern what sect do you follow under? Modern Orthodox. I mean, if I had to be limited to some sect, it would be modern Orthodox. Although people who are Orthodox don't call them, people who are Hasidic really don't call themselves Hasidic. I mean, if you ask, are you, the, are you anti? Are you anti? Are you anti-Zionist? I am what's called a non-Zionist. So, uh, from a uh, okay, so I'll, I'll I'll just come down. Yeah. No, but I support the state of Israel. <laughs> yeah, but not from a religious perspective, which means I support it like I support any democracy. But in terms of a Jew, right? I mean, Jews typically aren't classified uh, regarding on their support for the state of Israel. They'll bring in their ideology. So from a religious perspective, I'm an anti-Zionist. From a religious perspective, that means I know that the Jewish people were kicked out of the land for breaking Torah. It's, it's preposterous now to believe that God is going to bring them back when they're a hundred times more secular and irreligious than they were when God kicked them out. And they weren't even wait, irreligious when they got kicked out. However, I support the state of Israel because it's a democracy and it's a place that keeps Jews safe. That's it. You know, so it, I don't know. I mean, the average person can't balance the two, unfortunately. But this is the actual approach of the vast majority of Orthodox Jews. Hello? Hi. Hello, brother. What's so I, I looked into uh, Judaism and, you know, it uh, made sense for me. But what do I have to say to become Jewish? Because I heard some people, uh, they take 10 years to become Jewish. Is that true? Or is that just... I mean, it could take that long, but it's rare. It typically takes about a year. I like your profile picture, by the way. Okay. I'm a big fan. Yeah. Why don't you become Muslim? 
I've looked into it, and I like Islam a lot. And it's not because yeah. of the religion, but I appreciate the culture. And I appreciate that it's a very masculine religion. And Judaism is also very masculine, but just most Jews are not, unfortunately. I mean, many Israelis are, but the average Jew in America is not. So I yeah. fancy myself, you know, top G, what color is your Bugatti, right? Um, uh, although, I mean, Judaism, in terms of masculinity... I mean, you have King David, you have uh, Samson, right? Uh, I like that about Islam. I like women who are very chaste and modest. And religious Islam has all that. I would say that even, I don't know, I mean, Jewish women probably can learn modesty from a lot of Muslim women. And I'm, I'm just telling you the truth. Yeah. Um, however, the Torah tells me that God can add or take away. Um, God tells us that we're not allowed to add or take away from God's instructions. God tells us that the job of a prophet is to bring us back to Torah observance. Yeah. That cripples Islam I mean, completely because it claims to be a progression in our revelation. And it claims that Muhammad brought something new, some new message instead of bringing us back to the Torah. I mean, Muslims believe that Jews corrupted the Torah. So this is why. I'm well, not if, you, if you believe in Abraham... Moses, why not believe in Jesus and Muhammad? Because God said that not even a prophet could add anything new to the Torah. So the prophecy of Moses is different from everyone else's prophecy because Moses was able to lay down a standard while every other prophet was there to bring you back to that initial standard. And Jesus, um, I think, partially was help him to do that he was confronting the hypocrisy of his time i don't believe that what's written about him is really what he believed i believe that he was just a regular jewish person i don't believe he's the messiah mm -hmm. um yeah but he was a jewish person i think he was a righteous jewish person also uh okay. yeah but muhammad it's it's a different religion i mean christianity is a different religion as well unless that christian commits himself or herself to torah observance yeah, I uh, I understand what you're saying, but um, you know, if I were you, I would look into Islam because I did look you into know, you know it's we we believe it's the last message, you know, and it's yeah. also a, a monotheistic religion, so it it could make it could make some sense for you, you know. No, like only because it's monotheistic doesn't mean it has anything to do with Judaism. Uh, well, you also believe in one God, right? I do believe in one God. Well, there's some people that who would believe that there's one elephant and that elephant is God or one turtle and one turtle is God. Only because you're a monotheist doesn't mean that you're not an idolater. Yeah. I, I, uh, <clears throat> a lot of these points are my points, by the way. Meaning that uh, I've heard a lot of people here on TikTok quoting me. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, I think people feel that now they have some ammunition to toss towards people who are trying to convert them. And you'd be surprised. I've heard, like, my sayings all along. Most Jews don't have sayings that they tell non-Jews because most Jews don't proselytize. Okay? Most Jews don't encourage people to become Jewish. But it makes me proud. It makes me proud to be somewhat influential in, in equipping Jews to offer non-Jews an alternative to their belief system. Especially when those non-Jews are trying to convert them to either Islam or Christianity, right? And uh, well, these talking points stick. Is it true you can be a Jew without even believing in the religion itself? So It's an ethnicity, no. right? How does that work? So, okay, the Jewish people uh, are essentially an ethnicity. Okay. The religion of Judaism or Torah covenant, whatever you want to call it, that has to do with belief and behavior. That means, similar to Islam, if in Islam you were born into the belief system, mm -hmm. if your parents are Muslim, that you don't have to say your shahada again, correct? Um, that's not true. You have actually have to say it at least one time in your life. So, really? You, I mean, then I'm going to You're change. testifying that there's one God and there, that Muhammad is his. So, publicly? 
Yeah, you you should say it at least once in your life. No, I'm not saying that you should. Like, are you expected to say it to be considered a Muslim? If both of your parents are religious Muslims. If you're born in a Muslim household, but yeah, you should say it at least once in your life. You should, but do you have to? To be to to be considered a Muslim, you have to. All right. I mean, I've I've mentioned this to many Muslims, and they told me no. It's assumed if you grew up in a Islamic household, where that you don't have to say your shahat again. So it's very similar to Judaism. According to Jewish law, if you have a Jewish mother, you are legally Jewish. That means you're liable for the punishments of the court if you lived in Israel. But that doesn't mean that you're important to God. You can yeah. be of a pedigree going back to Abraham, but if you don't believe in God, like why would God believe in you, right? Yeah. So if you commit yourself to keeping the Torah, whether you're a descendant of Abraham or not, you become Israel, religious Israel. You enter a covenant with God and you become part of his treasured people. So that means that Judaism is not an ethno religion because Judaism has to do with the religion. The Jewish people are an ethnicity. So yes, there's an ethnic portion to our people, but there's not an ethnic portion to our religion. Meaning if you have an Abrahamic pedigree, right? And you don't practice, you know, the Torah, then you're not part of Judaism. But you're just an ethnic Jew. So the religion is not ethnocentric or, or an ethno religion. The people are in terms of an ethnicity. <laughs> but yeah. I, I, I find that weird because if you're a Muslim and let's say you become an atheist, you're considered a Muslim because you were born a Muslim or you were born in a country, you know? Right. So in Judaism also, I mean, Judaism doesn't consider you Jewish if you don't believe in God. However, it considers you legally a citizen of Israel, meaning an atheistical Jew could marry uh, another Jewish person who's religious. I'm able to write a ketubah, like a, Jew, like a marriage contract between an atheistical Jew and a religious Jew. I'm not saying I would do it, but legally I could do it. But that doesn't mean that person is important to God. This is only according to rabbinic Judaism. According to the Torah, if you don't believe in God, you're not even allowed to live in the land of Israel. So it's, it's yeah, it's a little more complicated. It's complicated, than, yeah. I, I... Yeah, but because it's complicated, it's, it's taught incorrectly by many people. And this is why many people think that, that Jews are bigoted and only care about blood and race, and it's not true. Okay. Question. Do you have some knowledge about the, the Old Testament? Yeah. Because on, uh, let's see, it's uh, Genesis 6, verse 6. But the Lord regretted. God regrets something if he's perfect, right? Okay. So, these ideas that God is not limited, or God is omniscient, omnipotent, all these embellishments don't, consistently appear in our Bible, as many people may be shocked to hear. By the simple fact that God says that he regretted doing something could mm -hmm. lead us possibly to believe that perhaps the future is not to be known. I mean, it just doesn't exist. How can you know what's illogical? Um, that we create this Superman notion of God, assuming that because, you know, if he claims to be God, he must be able to do everything and he must know a future and he knows you know i mean i think that we watch too much science fiction so do you believe that god is limited in a way i think that he's limited to our understanding yes no that, that that's what i believe too but um a religious person i mean i personally by faith believe that god knows what he's doing and why he's doing things however in my Bible, he does not appear like that. Not always. Well, the, you follow the Old Testament, don't you? It's yeah. one of the five books. Yeah. Well, the five books is part of the what Christians call the Old Testament. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so Still... in, in the Jewish Bible, the Old Testament, the Torah, whatever, there's instances that shows God all-knowing. 
And there's instances that shows them not all knowing. So that leads me to believe that we shouldn't make any conclusion on what God knows and doesn't know. Because the reason God is God to us is because he's ethical. Because he's well, an ethical law. Not because, you know, that my religion perf- uh, teaches him as in some way limitless. To try to convince me to Judaism, then you... Important for me, God is limitless and make mistakes, you know, because otherwise, how is he God if he has a limit, you know? Mm-hmm. Worship someone limited in, in if he can make mistakes or if he can, you know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so that's not impressive to me. That doesn't make me want to join any religion. Clearly, the later belief system, i.e. Islam, because it's trying to solidify its existence, right, alongside Judaism and Christianity, it has to claim to improve the previous belief systems. So the Torah appears how it appears, with supposed errors and all. Islam cannot accept that. Islam fixes all the errors, makes it seem like our prophets didn't sin, it it made it seem like Noah didn't get drunk, you know, because it assumed that that was the more sophisticated approach. Maybe back then, I think a book that shows our heroes with warts and all, with with their shortcomings at all, makes it one more relatable, makes it true, it makes it two more authentic. Because if we were so into changing our text, why didn't we just make it sound better instead of? leaving what many other people would consider errors in. Yeah. So that doesn't make or break my belief system. What rendition of what God thought this and that, because as a matter of fact, in the Torah, it doesn't say that the book of Genesis was given in the Torah. Uh, so Gen- Genesis, I'm sorry. Genesis was not in the old Testament. Okay. So the old Testament is not the Torah or what Christians it's... call the old Testament is, Oh, the whole, um, what's it, uh, um, the whole Tanakh. I mean, Tanakh oh. is what Jesus is the Testament. So okay. it's the Torah, the writings, and the prophets. So the well, Torah... It is, isn't the, the Old Testament an English translation of the Tanakh, or...? Uh, yeah, yeah. It is, Yeah, right? but of Tanakh, but not the Torah. I mean, the Torah is just the first portion of it. The first okay. five books of Moses is what we today call the Torah. However, the Torah within the five books of Moses are only the instructions in the Torah. Because that's what Torah means. Torah means instruction. So the narrative wasn't given on Mount Sinai. I mean, we may believe that it's some like it's divinely inspired in faith, but according to the text, the only thing that we received from God was the instructions that began on Mount Sinai and uh, continued to the end of Deuteronomy. So, it doesn't make or break our religion just because there may be an inconsistency of God changes, changing his mind here or there. That doesn't make or break our religion because our religion is based off the Torah. The ethical instructions on how man could elevate him or herself from the act, that's what makes our religion special. And that's the only thing that makes or breaks our religion. Not whether the story of the flood may appear in the Epic of Gilgamesh or in some other that there's any people who dropped religion over the stupidest reasons. That's not what the Torah says. The word of God is the word of God is only the, the commandments within the Torah. Everything else there is there to amplify those commandments or to give context. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, that's that. Now there's a lot of things I believe in that aren't even in the Bible. I, I believe in the Talmud. I believe in the Mishnah. Right. But, Believing in it what doesn't mean that I believe it came from God. I do believe the Mishnah is sanctioned by the Torah because God tells us to listen to the court and the rulings of the court is what appears in the Mishnah. Just like Islam has the Hadith. I mean, it's, it, there has to be some further understanding on how to apply legal concepts in everyday life. This is why we have the oral law. Yeah, I agree. But the Torah is just the, is the commandments within the five books of Moses. Mm-hmm. And also believe in the messiah 
So the notion of the Messiah doesn't literally appear in the Torah at all. I mean, oh, I it's like for you guys, like what for us is the Hadith. It's what's it called for you? The oral law. Yeah, is it what appears in the oral law? Oh, the Messiah for sure appears in the oral law. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I just believe that anything metaphysical has to appear in the Torah for us to be forced to believe in it. In terms of what's legal, that's what could appear in the oral law. Because the, the oral law deals with law. It doesn't deal with metaphysics. That's what it's called, Torah Shabbat Peh. It's Torah, it's instruction. So our rabbis spoke a lot about metaphysical issues, but it's just their opinion. And many times they contradict each other. And this is why there's many rabbis that will tell you, like, we hold like this, we don't hold like this, because it's it depends what your community is from. And that'll affect how... how you view metaphysics in the afterlife and stuff like that. But it's like, if you don't like what one community is teaching, you could go to another community. I'm sure Islam is similar. Yeah, we, we have uh, different methods. Anyways, on that note, I, <clears throat> I mean, I think I'm going to end. I started like at 5.30 today and it's, it's already. But thank you. Thank you, everybody. Today was, uh, I mean, this is probably a better time slot because we're getting a lot more... Um, I don't know. I mean, all the people who like to argue are are from like five to nine. Because I usually start at ten thirty at night, and I get I don't know. I don't know who I get. But uh, let's see. What can you not see? It's more powerful. Okay, fine. All right. So thank you for stopping by, and okay. tomorrow we'll do it again. Thank you.